participants, thank you very much for joining today. Uh, I'm Dr. Malini, and uh, I and my colleague, Ms. Kavita, are uh, working with an organization called Administrative Staff College of India. Uh, thank you very much for joining this event. Uh, this is an extremely important topic, an area of deep interest as well as concern for all of us. Uh, Shayan, next slide. We have a lot of panelists, eminent members in the industry who will be speaking to you today. We are facing a little bit of a technology challenge because we did not realize we will get such overwhelming response. The meeting room admits only 300. We thought we will have 300 participants, but we have registrations from 5,000 and more than 5,000 are already there in YouTube also. So, so it's a great thing that there is so much of response. At the same time, we faced a little bit of technology challenge. We apologize for this uh, delayed start. So just to give you an understanding of who all are participating in today's meeting, uh, many of you educators have joined. We have representations from national, state, district education officers. Many Swachh Bharat mission officers have joined. SSA coordinators have joined. Uh, NGOs have joined. And of course, what is really nice to see is that even children have registered for this webinar. And I welcome each one of you to this program. Thank you very much for joining. A special uh, warm response to all the members who have joined from outside India. Thank you for coming. And we look forward to you sharing your experience with us in the chat box. Shayan, next please. So a little bit about our organization before I go into the session. Administrative Staff College of India uh, is an institute which is a think tank which supports various ministries at the national level and uh, state level and city level um, uh, officials in building their capacities. We work on policy, we help in implementation. Our vision in our activity related to water sanitation in schools is to ensure that every child in India should benefit from access to safe and inclusive wash in schools. We, this is our vision and we have been working towards this vision and we are grateful to all the members, panelists who have joined for putting their weight behind us to put, participating, collaborating with us. We are thankful to their organizations. As ASCII, we provide uh, support, uh, knowledge support, research support. Uh, we conduct training programs. Uh, we develop ICT tools. We also support a lot of innovators who are working towards improving washing schools in India. Our website is given below. You can always reach out to us for anything at all. Otherwise, you can search for us and reach out to us through other means as well. Next one. As I mentioned, uh, to set the context for today's webinar, we are all aware that Swachh Bharat Swachh Vidyalaya National Mission was launched in 2014. And ever since, there has been tremendous growth, tremendous improvement in various aspects of infrastructure, as well as operation maintenance, as well as capacities of schools in India. Whether it is construction of gender segregated toilet, whether it is provision of water in all the schools, whether it is um, uh, menstrual hygiene facilities or infrastructure, uh, uh, hand wash infrastructure, several areas, there has been a marked and tremendous improvement. However, one area where there is still scope for a lot of improvement and continuous work is that of behavior change. Now in behavior change, there are various stakeholders who are involved in making water sanitation and hygiene programs a success in schools. And behavior change programs are required for all of them. Today, we are meeting here to speak specifically about behavior change in children with regard to hand wash and hand hygiene. 
So therefore, today's session will be focused on this, while other behavior change uh, related topics will be dealt with in future sessions. Next. So let us take a quick poll just to see if all of you are awake. Uh, this is post lunch time in India, and uh, we would love to hear from you uh, about your views about this. You will see the poll. Please click on your answer. The question that we are asking you is, do you think schools are able to implement IEC and behavior change programs as per guidelines of Swachh Bharat, Swachh Vidyalaya, or Swachh Bharat Puraskar? Swachh Vidyalaya Puraskar, it's not Swachh Bharat, sorry, it's Swachh Vidyalaya Puraskar. So while all of us intend to do it, while all of us feel it is extremely important, the question that we are asking is, are we able to do it? Whether it is in terms of availability of funds, whether it is in terms of availability of materials or guidance or a strategic approach, do you feel as a teacher, as an educator, as an administrator, do you feel we are able to implement it in letter and spirit? So I have about, uh, fantastic, the responses are coming in. Fantastic. So maybe we can just uh, show the poll. We have more than 130 responses already. We can show the results, uh, Shen. Great. So 85% of the people feel that yes, we are able to implement IEC and behavior change as per guidelines, whereas only 15% feel that they have not been able to do it. So let us see, as we go through this webinar, we will see why you feel you are not able to do it and why you feel you have been able to do it. We will also in this webinar try to understand what do we mean by behavior change program? Is it just implementing uh, some activities such as essays or poems? Is it uh, taking the school uh, child cabinet members into our fold? Is it getting the school management committee and parents into fold? What is it that uh, entails uh, uh, behavior change programs? And we hope that by the end of this webinar, we will all go back more enlightened. Next, uh, next slide, Jen. So during the pandemic, since March 2022, children are stuck at home, we all know, and they are bombarded with multiple messages from various channels repeatedly, whether it is their parents or it is multimedia or through celebrities or through uh, our elected representatives, these messages have been bombarded literally on our children. Going by this, the general understanding is that the impact should be high and our children should have got this message loud and clear. But my question to you is, has it really worked? Chen, next slide. Do you think it has worked? When I say, when I ask you this question of whether it has worked, what I want to say is that if we have 60 children in our classroom, are we sure that all the 60 are going to wash their hands at all the five critical times uh, with the soap and also practice it when they get back home? Are we sure about it? If you're not, then we have some more work to do. Next slide, Shai. So let's take one more poll to see uh, your response to this. Now, the first question was whether you think you were able to implement behavior change programs successfully. Now, this is, do you think hand hygiene campaigns during COVID have been successful in bringing positive behavior change among children and change that will last, not just now, but change that will last?
very interesting. Most of you, if you see, if I, as of now, I've got 140 responses. Okay, we can stop this here, Rajesh. We can share the results. Thank you. So 87%, an overwhelming majority of you feel that the communication campaigns on hand hygiene, particularly during COVID times, have been very successful. And children will continue to practice safe hand hygiene even after COVID. That's a fantastic uh, uh, result. However, this is what we also assumed. ASCII, as an institute which is working with uh, Washington schools, uh, we can remove this, Shayan. This is exactly what we also assumed, that with so much of messaging, I'm sure children would have uh, now got this message and therefore it triggered, because after all, we are academics and researchers, it triggered something in us and we said that, is it an assumption or is it really true? And then we set out to do a small study on Global Hand Washing Day. Shan, next slide, please. So on this Global Hand Washing Day on 15th October, 2021, we launched a 10 day virtual hand hygiene awareness campaign and a small survey for school children. Firstly, we like this webinar, we were taken aback even when the survey was launched because we received 48,000 plus responses from children. And responses came from all the states and union territories. Not a single one was left out. It was received from children from all across the country. 66% were from rural areas. 89% of the students who responded were from government schools. 80% of the students were in the age group of uh, 11 to 15 years. And the balanced 20 were in the age group of 7 to 11 years. 64% of the students who participated were female students. So we found some really interesting results in this survey. And after conducting this survey, we were so curious that we wanted to follow it up. And we did some focus group discussions and also personal interviews. And I'm very happy to share the results. And some of you will be surprised to see the results. And I hope that will, if I put the poll again, your response may be different. So let's see if you change your response. Next. So some of the key findings, uh, and I'd like to take you through them uh, slowly is first, 45% of the students themselves admitted that they do not wash hands. However, they gave solid reason. They said, we do not wash hands because we have, either we don't have access to water or we don't have access to soap. Because the question was not if you wash hands, but do you wash hands with soap? So 45% of the students says they do not wash hands because they don't have water or soap. However, the interesting part is 35% of students say they do not wash hands because they really don't know why they should or because they are simply lazy. Now, this is what is startling. And this is where I would like all of you who have said yes to the question of, do you think the communication has worked to rethink so 35% of the children have outright said, no, we don't wash because I'm just lazy. I don't know why I should do it. Even more interesting is 18.5% of the students, they think they have absolutely no germs on their hands. So why should I? This is a startling number. And this shows that even if infrastructure is made available, that means even if schools are able to provide hand wash stations, water and soap, there will be at least 35 plus 0.5 and 18.5, that's close to 45% of students will still not wash because they are not convinced. Only 20% of the students said that they are washing hands because of COVID and they will not practice it. So surely they will not continue with this after the pandemic is over. These results are startling 
and also disturbing at the same time. Next slide. Now, the balance 20-30% of students who said that they do practice hand hygiene and do wash hands regularly said about 70, 70 or 80% of them are using soap and water and 17% are using sanitizers and 4% said they use other means. 30% of the students who are using sanitizers do not use it before they consume meals which means they are probably using it after they go to the toilet or after they go outside to play and come home. But just before eating, they are not using the hand sanitizer because it contains alcohol and they believe it will make them sick. Therefore, if you are looking at using sanitizers for midday meal programs, this is a challenge that one has to deal with. Another interesting thing is that Children have a preference for liquid soap over soap bar, and they believe it is safer and free of germs. The balance 30% preferred sanitizers over soap. So if we want children to get used to it, perhaps soap is not, and hand wash stations is not what is working. They need liquid soaps in the hand wash stations, and they prefer sanitizers because it gives them flexibility. They can tuck it in their pockets. This is another finding from the, uh, from the study. Next. Some interesting questions we asked them because we wanted to know how ingrained this habit is in the house. So we asked them, do adults in your house frequently wash hands? 90% of the students said my mother washes her hands all the time. Only 80% said my father washes his hands. And only 40% of the students said my grandparents wash their hands. So therefore, during communication, children we know are close to their grandparents. However, what they are observing is grandparents are not very particular with washing their hands. This is also uh, a surprise uh, finding for us. We, our understanding was something else. Next question was, do you think constant prompting, keep telling them, wash your hands, wash your hands, and supervision, which teachers do in the schools, is required to make children wash their hands. 40% as expected said, no, we don't want people prompting, it is irritating. And because they keep prompting in rebellion, we will not wash our hands. 50% said, yes, it's okay, but only during COVID. After COVID, leave us alone. Don't tell us to keep washing our hands again and again. And only 10% said, yes, prompting is that means children don't want to be told. We have to find some other ways of communicating to them. Direct messaging of say, do this is not going to work. Prompting them looks like is not uh, working well with them. Next. Who, who would influence you most in washing your hands? This was our questions. And most of the students said their parents and demonstrated behavior, not parents telling them. But watching their parents wash their hands regularly, watching their teachers do it, watching their friends do it, is the biggest influencer. 90% said cartoons and celebrities do not influence. They said they are for kids. We don't need cartoons because this age group was 11 to 15. And 90% feel children are the best influencers. They say we can influence each other better. So you take us in campaigns. Don't bring uh, celebrities. Don't bring cartoons. And uh, parents demonstrating good hand wash behavior seems to have an influencing factor. Another very interesting uh, uh, outcome or uh, finding from the result is we asked them what kind of messaging is most effective. So here we saw that children have a very different view of themselves versus how they view other children. So when it came to themselves, they said, if you give me positive messages, if there are parents are doing it, if there is good demonstration, uh, I will, it will influence me. That kind of message is good, very effective. But when we say, okay, what about your friends? What do you think, what kind of messaging? Their point was very clear. You should use fear. You show all dangerous, dramatic looking things so that it scares them and they will wash their hands. So in their minds, they are intelligent and very involved, but others are not. So this is, we found this very interesting and we will leave it to all the communication experts here in the group to figure this out. 
one point which came out throughout our conversations is games and experiments would help in making everybody understand but the games have to be age appropriate this is the games that you have for primary school children are being used for us also and that's not good we need age appropriate games and that we feel would help in reaching the message very effectively so these are some of the key findings uh, from our research um, uh, next uh, slide and after looking at all this uh, we thought we must share this with the broader audience and i'm extremely grateful to the ministry of education uh, central board of secondary education kendriya vidyalaya sangathan several state education departments which when they shared the results of our primary uh, study uh, they were enthused and they asked us to conduct this uh, webinar and they have sponsored and nominated so many people to come and attend and learn from this so our conclusion is that doesn't look like one single intervention is going to help we need to look at behavior change from multiple angles we need to look at it in a more holistic 360 degree view we need some cell which is working on this consistently guiding the states on how to implement how to develop and implement behavior change programs we need some action plan to be shared uh, and then it is it should be for multiple stakeholders not just students but teachers parents community all these are there as part of our swachh vidyalaya puraskar program as well as swachh bharat uh, uh, swachh vidyalaya however how to how to convert this into actionable points and do it consistently is something where all of us require to think and provide support most importantly we need to have a monitoring and impact assessment framework unless we talk to the students we will keep assuming that whatever we are doing is working very well how do we know it's working or not working and i think that's where we need a good monitoring and impact assessment framework to be developed and shared with uh, all the concerned and training programs to be conducted with that i conclude and uh, i will have the last poll in my session up um, can you put up the poll chaya thank you so the question is do you agree that we need a dedicated cell very importantly with clear funding for behavior change at state level to develop monitor and assess the impact many a times we find that schools teachers headmasters tend to fend for themselves uh there is funding assigned from state however it might not be sufficient for what all we want to do in order to achieve the results so do you do you think we should have we should work towards having dedicated cells at national as well as state districts so that clear professionals are running the show they can guide us and help us in assessing the impact so results are still coming in about 110 people have responded okay let's let's have the results about 120 have responded so clearly 96% of you feel that we must have a dedicated cell please work with aski we will also reach out to you let us make this happen let us make this a reality uh, let us approach the state governments and the national ministry to work towards this and establish very robust behavior change programs now uh, in order to take this program to the next step uh, we have you know put together a fantastic list of speakers today now they are going to bring you global experiences of how different countries are running behavior change programs we have also members from india who will speak about how corporates 
are contributing to this behavior change initiatives in schools, how NGOs are contributing, can contribute, and how all of you can reach out to corporates and NGOs to, to support you in your thinking and your programs related to behavior change. After listening to all these rich experiences, towards the last part of the, the second part of the uh, webinar, we have members from BBC Media Action, uh, Center for Social Behavior Change Communication, and One Drop Foundation, dedicated organizations working towards behavior change communication programs. They will talk to you about the principles. What are the guiding principles we must keep in mind to develop effective programs. I'm sure you will go back learning a lot, uh, go back with a lot of ideas, listening to uh, today's session. With that, I conclude my session and uh, I would like to check uh, with uh, the IT team if uh, we managed to get the speakers of the global experiment session in. Bella was having difficulty in coming in. Did we manage to do that? Yeah, Belinda is in and Dr. Gautam is there. And Bella? Yeah, we can yeah. start with Gautam and Belinda. Yes, hello. Um, there's still, uh, I. Yeah, go on, Belinda. Yes, hello. So it seems like um, Layla is now got in and Bella is still having some challenges to get in. Um, and so if Bella cannot get in, we will have to ask um, somebody to do her presentation or I'll try to do it. So could we start with the India uh, session first because Ravi is already here and then move to the next. Is that okay, uh, Melinda? That sounds fine. We'll just talk with, with Dr. Om because I do know he's pressing, but thank you very much. Great. Is that okay, Mr. Rome? Dr. Rome, is that okay? Shall we have Ravi start the session till we manage to get Bella in? So absolutely fine. I need to leave in one hour time. So if my session within that time frame, absolutely fine. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll have uh, uh, you in before that. So uh, uh, Kavita, are you there? Yeah, great. Thank you. So uh, Mr. Ravi, thank you very much for joining this session. And I uh, would request my colleague uh, Kavita to please uh, introduce Mr. Ravi properly to all the participants in this group. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Mali. So um, welcome, Dr. Uh, Mr. Ravi Bhatnagar. So Mr. Ravi Bhatnagar leads experience and partnership at Ricket. Before this role, he was leading the same function uh, for um, uh, AMSEA region at Ricket. So at Ricket, he is a member of Global Corporate Affairs and Sustainability Leadership Team now. So in recognition of Ricket's exemplary work in social impact, he's, uh, he's in the WTO Hall of Fame and a recipient of the President of India Medal. So he has contributed immensely to improve wash sector and is passionate about washing schools. So I once again uh, request Mr. Ravi Bhatnagar to uh, I once again welcome him. Over to you, Mr. Bhatnagar. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you for choosing such an interesting subject for, uh, for the day. Amid this third wave of COVID, this becomes super important because uh, as we know, the school going kids are not vaccinated yet. As we know, a lot of elderly are also not vaccinated. It's a, it's a time like, you know, we focus our energies back and hand washing is not just restricted towards, uh, you know, uh, very much like, you know, hand washing during eating food and after going uh, to the loo and all that. It, it should be the habit which needs to be there every day, every time. And uh, I would first love to start with a video presentation, a small video I would love to play for all of you. And my sincere regards to all the kids. I have sent a message also in the chat room, although like we are less number of participants now. Thank you all the kids who are in class one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's so fabulous to see you. Many of you have joined with your teachers. Many of you have joined solely. Many of you have joined with uh, your friends. Uh, it's amazing to see and, you know, wish you all very happy new year before I, you know, move ahead. Thanks to all the elderly also, all the teachers, all the principals and others who have been deputed or who have interest in this subject. Uh, 
I will be using English and Hindi as a medium in explaining uh, the things when I will be talking further. But my first request is to uh, ask the team to play the video and then I come to the presentation. Thank you so much. So uh, we come to the presentation without losing further time. Uh, we can make it to the full screen. Can we do it full screen? Yeah, thank you. So thank you everyone for watching the small video. So we cover around 75% of the primary schools in India. Uh, I'm very grateful to many organizations like ASCII and many others, you know, uh, Administrative Staff College of India, uh, partners, uh, current partners and the ex-partners, uh, you know, including Plan India, then Aga Khan Foundation, Fiki ISC and many others with whom we work. We have a battery of partners across India, 100 plus partners and I represent a company which makes a bit all. And uh, with, by the virtue of our work, we reach out to around 6,50,000 schools across India. And we are very proud to say like we reach out to 20 million school kids and uh, uh, the programs have been very successful in terms of the coverage, uh, in terms of the reach, in terms of uh, the children parliaments that we conducted, in terms of the number of states we are in, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, how we are able to take this program from India to now in 20 countries. Uh, just to tell, tell you, like in 2015, we started this program in India. And now uh, we have entered just, uh, you know, this is, uh, today is the uh, seventh day of uh, 2022 
And so it was such a proud moment, like, you know, uh, we are in 20 plus countries with the same program. The kids are hand washing and uh, a lot of other things are happening. But uh, definitely there are some very, very important and interesting points to ponder upon. One of the important point is like programs will only be successful when children are at the center of it. Teachers can run the program because uh, teachers have to. That's the Indian system of teaching. That's great. But moreover, what we particularly believe is mothers and fathers and the families play a very important role in bringing the kids. Uh, it's our grandparents. Uh, it's maternal and paternal grandparents. They also play very, very important roles. Teachers do have a role, definitely, because a child spends around six to seven hours a day in the school. Uh, principals actually spend more time with the teachers and others. It's all very important, like how things are. Uh, nevertheless, uh, very important is like, you know, some of the slides which I will take you through now. So may I request the team uh, to actually put the presentation back because I'm not able to see my presentation here. Uh, can I ask the team to put the presentation back? Okay. Uh, in a nutshell, I will tell you, like, you know, uh, when we started, we worked with Dr. Abdul Kalam, uh, who has written a book, uh, Wings of Fire. He was the president of India. He was the one with whom we created the curriculum for the school kids. We started working together. We made a lot of things like, you know, games, sports-led activities and other things. And, you know, we started uh, some of the work in the states like Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. And now, if I tell you, like, you know, we are able to really, really uh, make it really huge. In more than uh, 20 states across India and Union territories, we are already there. And we very much look forward to expand our program footprint. And uh, we really, really want to make sure, like, you know, children are at the center of uh, all this work. And uh, a few things, like, uh, we, we all lack research, actually. A lot of work has to be gone, actually, on the research part. A lot of efforts needs to be put on the research, like, because, you know, behavioral changes and the behavioral nudges are something which really, really need to be worked upon. and. Uh, what I, saw, what I see is like, you know, uh, research happens largely, you know, someone is actually investing into uh, creating the pipelines for the water. Someone is actually making the IC material, which sometimes we don't understand. Uh, we are working for the kids and uh, the median, the teachers, like the, the age of the teachers, the age of the kids, always there will be a difference. But what is a fine balance? Like, you know, there is no right of the people who are in like, like me, who are in the mid 40s or mid 50s or mid 60s to create things for the kids because, you know, there are different generations now. You have generation X, generation Y, generation Z. How we reduce the median age of the people who are actually in the decision making, the, the age of the people who are actually designing the program for the kids. It's good to have, you know, some of the technical institutes and organizations which create some of the behavioral nudges, et cetera, et cetera. And what we see is like children are at the receiving end at most of the times. I'm very proud, like, you know, I got uh, opportunity to work with Amar Usad, who is also there uh, as one of my co-panelists. Uh, when we were working together, like, you know, he challenged me on something very interesting. He says, Ravi ji, wall painting to bahut sari hoti hai. Aisi wall painting banaiye jo ki bachon se baat kar sake. It was a very, very big challenge for me also, like, you know, uh, someone uh, like Asad coming and asking me, ye wall paintings bachon se wapis kaise baat karengi? It was a new thing, and that was a time when QR codes were used. But I'm very fortunate, like, you know, we were able to create the magic together in the states like UP, Bihar, and Gujarat, where we had, we, we have done plenty of work where, you know, the modern technology and other things, uh, you know, sabka uh, sab cheeze saath mein milke hum log kar paaye. There were big questions ki aap mother saas mein program ko kyun nahi leke jate? Aap guru kuls mein program ko kyun nahi leke jate hygiene ke? Or is it CBSC, NCRT, state board ke schools mein kyun hote hai programs? Uh, we took the challenge again as a company. We said ki, uh, hai, jase humare liye ye public schools hai, government schools hai, government primary schools hai, utna important hai ki mother saas mein jo bachche hai, jo ki jada tar orphan vulnerable hote hai, or poor hote hai, usi tarah se jo guru kul ke andar jo bachche adhyan karne ke liye aate hai, un tak bhi hygiene curriculum kaise jai? I'm very proud to tell you, uh, like, you know, uh, more than, you know, 500,000 uh, madrasas across India are covered by us. 2,500 plus gurukuls are covered by the Detol Hygiene Curriculum in India, which makes the Detol Hygiene Curriculum as biggest hygiene curriculum in India. 
by the virtue of its presence in the number of states, by the virtue of presence in the aspirational districts, by the number of uh, you know kids what we reach out to. But you know uh, how we measure the programs is very important. Uh, one very important aspect is, but is uh, by doing all this behavior change work. What is the epidemiological impact of this work? Like, you know, is, is the school attendance rates going up? Are the girls joining us more in the classrooms? Do uh, in the hygiene, like we can't leave the menstrual hygiene as a subject. So what's, what, what, what are we talking on the menstrual hygiene? Are we making sure like what the needs of everyone are taking care of? And, you know, this whole hygiene thing is not just limited to boy child or a girl child. It's even for the binaries, the third gender also. So who is, who is doing something for them? Uh, you know, there, there, there's a huge battery of research which is required on the behavior work, which uh, like, you know, there's some work with Asad, again, I will quote here, like, you know, we went and we did some work with the Madhubiri paintings with the kids. When the COVID second wave and the first wave were, was there, so we created the Madhubani paintings, not we, the kids created, depicting the various life scenarios and why they have to wash the hands. There's some very nice postcards done, the wall paintings done. Whenever, you know, Asad, you can, you can share with the, the bigger group here. More than happy, you can share with everyone, like, you know, how you use the local artisans, how you use the local art, how you use the local music, how you use the local dance. Definitely, like, with the research, what, you know, administrative staff, staff college has done, celebrities don't matter. What matters is the peers. And how we are strengthening the peers, that's very important. बच्चों बच्चों को कैसे स्ट्रेंथन कर रहे हैं बच्चे बच्चों को कैसे पावर कर रहे हैं मैंने दो कैंपेन्स करी हैं अभी लास्ट दो कोविड वेव्स में हैंड वॉशिंग पे एक था डिटॉल टिकटॉक चैलेंज जो कि वर्ल्ड का सबसे बड़ा कैंपेन है किसी और कंपनी ने किसी और ब्रांड ने वैसा चैलेंज नहीं किया आई एम वेरी श्योर आप में से भी बहुत सारे लोगों ने उसमें पार्टिसिपेट किया होगा दूसरा था डिटॉल सल्यूट जिसके अंदर डिटॉल की बॉटल के ऊपर हमने जो डिटॉल हीरोज थे कोविड के टाइम में लोगो हटा के हीरोज को जगा दी और आप मार्केट में जाते हैं तो डिटॉल की जो हैंड वॉशिंग लिक्विड है उसके ऊपर आपको अपने लोकल हीरोज जिन लोगों ने कोविड में एक दूसरे की मदद किया था उनकी आपको फोटोज दिखेंगी वहां पे और है मार्केट के अंदर ऑलरेडी सो बिहेवियर चेंज बहुत सारी तरह से होते हैं ये जो ट्रेडिशनल वेज है बिहेवियर चेंज के जो सो कॉल्ड पुरानी जो रिसर्च एजेंसी जिस तरह से काम करती है वैसा ना करके हम लोग पीयर एजुकेशन को इंडिया में कैसे स्ट्रेंथन कर सकते हैं वो बहुत बड़ी बात है रिसर्च के अंदर हम कैसे इन्वेस्टमेंट्स को और बढ़ाएं वो इंपॉर्टेंट बात है तीसरी जो इंपॉर्टेंट बात है जिसके साथ में मैं अपना सेशन यहाँ पे एंड करना चाहूंगा वो है टेक्नोलॉजी आज बच्चे इतने सारे बच्चे यहाँ पे लॉक इन है अभी मैं निखिल कुमार रावत जी को देख रहा हूँ जिन्होंने स्पेक्स पहन रखे हैं यहाँ पे और इससे पहले और भी एक छोटी सी बच्ची थी जिसके आगे क्लास वन ने लिखा था आज बच्चों ने मोबाइल डिवाइस से अपने आप को लॉग कर रखा है बच्चे कंप्यूटर के सामने बैठे हैं यहाँ पे एक छोटा सा बच्चा अंश शाह अभी मैं देख पा रहा हूँ छोटे छोटे बच्चे हैं कुछ क्लास थर्ड में होंगे फोर्थ फिफ्थ सिक्स में इट्स सो हैप्पी इट्स सो इम्पोर्टेंट टू सी देम हाउ द टेक्नोलॉजी इंटरफेसिस कैन बी इम्प्रूव दैट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग एंड दिस होल टाइम इज फॉर द किड्स दिस टाइम इज ऑफ द किड्स एंड एज द इंडिया प्रियम्बल से We we the people of India, we the citizens of India, India, citizens so, वो जो we है इस पूरे प्रोग्राम में हैंड वॉशिंग में वो वी सारे बच्चे हैं तो ये प्रोग्राम बच्चों के द्वारा बच्चों के द्वारा संचालित होना चाहिए बच्चों के द्वारा डिजाइन होना चाहिए बच्चों के द्वारा स्केल अप होना चाहिए बेसिकली दिस दिस होल प्रोग्राम फॉर दोज हुआ इंग्लिश लिस्निंग ऑडियंस दिस प्रोग्राम शुड बी डिजाइन बाय द किड्स दिस प्रोग्राम शुड बी डिजाइन फॉर द किड्स this program should be scaled by the kids until unless that happens until unless the peer learning happens you know we can be small catalysts here and there where they need us but i don't think so it's a rocket science to inculcate the behavior change we are seeing the huge stride of success children are improving increasing and you know somewhere uh, you know uh, when i was making a campaign someone told me malini this is a very important point and very interesting thing uh most of the people actually show the black hands and the brown skin and the black skin in the campaigns of the hand washing soaps you can see it globally do you, do we think like you know the white people and the people who are in the western world they are better off no they are not if i we have the globe we have the detol racket hygiene institute where the world top doctors are there and they are working with us regularly on the sars mers covid wave 1 2 3 and many other things on hygiene we are seeing the trends of hand washing as poor as they may be in india or in some of the sub saharan countries as it is in the europe and many other uh, you know european countries as well as in the us as well as in other other places and the appetite to learn here is amazing in india 
although we are a country where there is Bharat and India exist, so somewhere it's our responsibility, Malini and many others who are there in this forum today, to bridge the gap and we all pledge, like, you know, we will be, we will be making sure like India's uh, infection rates will uh, break down on COVID and children will be more, you know, having the more access to soap, sanitizer, hand wash, whatsoever is available. And we break the chains, like, you know, the estimates are around 17 lakh people will be infected every day in this COVID wave three by some of the estimates. And children, again, like, you know, sometimes we think like we can tell children, but nowadays children are very smart. It's, uh, you know, there's a reverse conversations happening where children challenge the adults and they tell you, Papa, aapne haat dhoye. Chacha, aapne haat dhoye. Mommy, aapne haat dhoye. So those kind of conversations have started and myself, Umar and many others may have witnessed that in our, you know, when we reached out to 20 million school kids, you know, even the population of, you know, countries like so many countries of Europe and the population of, uh, you know, whole of, uh, you know, uh, UK will be, will be less than what we cover actually in India. So I, I with this, uh, thank you so much, Malini, for giving me a opportunity to speak on behalf of Ritol Banega's First India program. And... Uh, championing this cause at a national level and uh, you have been a, a great instrument of uh, you know uh, motivation to all of us and great to see like uh, woman leadership actually cutting the whole uh, you know this glass ceiling and uh, leading this show really lovely seeing everyone thank you so much thank you thank you ravi thank you so much women all the way no no doubt about that <laughs> thank you so much for your uh, sharing your thoughts and um, this is a shout out for all the uh, uh, participants that uh, Detol has done fantastic work. Their reach is tremendous and we must benefit from this. We must collaborate with them and take this uh, process forward. With that, I invite uh, Dr. Asit Umar, uh, a senior program officer and sector lead for WASH and health at Aga Khan Foundation, another wonderful organization which has contributed tremendously to WASH in schools. He's associated personally with WASH sector since last 21 years uh, with a focus on water supply, sanitation, solid waste, health hygiene programs. As a WASH professional, he has significant experience in formulation and management of large scale WASH and emergency response programs. And uh, he has several flagship programs that he has introduced. Uh, Dr. Omar, thank you so much for your time and look forward to listening to you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Am I audible? Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy that Ravi is also part of uh, this uh, uh, conversation and webinar. And uh, always uh, it's, it's a bit challenging because earlier also I have shared platform uh, with Ravi. Uh, once he shared his views, so it's, it's difficult to take that forward. But anyway, Ravi, for Thanks a lot uh, um, for actually uh, uh, mentioning some of our work that we work, uh, we, we did together. And uh, I would also like to extend our sincere thanks to ASCII uh, uh, for giving this opportunity to share some of the uh, experiences. In fact, uh, 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 for Aga Khan Foundation, uh, we uh, started our uh, washing school program uh, way back in 2016. And that was the time when uh, uh, we were supporting uh, to such a Bharat mission in a big way across six uh, states. Uh, then we realized that somewhere uh, this whole component of hygiene is actually missing uh, from the Swachh Bharat mission program. And at that point of time, I still remember my conversation with Ravi that Ravi was this is something where we should do, uh, we must do something uh, to, to bring in this whole element of hygiene. And that's all on a very, very small scale in 350 schools, we started our school hygiene education program. But yes, thanks uh, uh, to uh, the efforts of several donors, other key stakeholders, uh, uh, the uh, AKF uh, and Acadian network, that today we are almost reaching out to uh, uh, 4,500, nearly, uh, nearly 5,000 schools uh, across uh, uh, three states. So primarily our work is in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, and Gujarat. But yes, we, we do have our interventions uh, in Madhya Pradesh, uh, as well as uh, in Telangana and Maharashtra as well. Um, uh, can somebody put up the uh, presentation, please, if that is possible? Yes. So uh, uh, next slide, please. Yes, yeah, so uh, this is something uh, which definitely I would like to highlight. So uh, when we started our uh, school hygiene education program, so uh, 
as the earlier speakers has uh, mentioned that uh, somewhere we really need to uh, focus more on peer education the research part and the technology so exactly precisely this is how we started our interventions uh, on on a smaller scale but then again uh, we uh, we introduce uh, this whole uh, component of uh, 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 hygiene education cu uh, curriculum, and thanks to the tremendous support that was provided by Mr. Ravi at that point of time. Uh, we, uh, and then uh, our focus was much more to actually empower teachers at, uh, so that they can uh, they can closely work with the children uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, inculcate the behavior, uh, improve hygiene behavior. Then other part where we actually focused was uh, to strengthen the school management committees uh, so that they can actually uh, prioritize wash within the school development plans. Empowerment of Bal Sansad, as Ravi has also mentioned, uh, this whole concept of child parliament. So it was something that we uh, uh, initially conceptualized. Of course, many other organizations have done that. But then again, I mean, in terms of uh, peer learning uh, and uh, how children can actually uh, take the lead, uh, they can uh, understand their situations and uh, uh, they can create a sort of enabling environment within the school. So that is how this whole concept of Bal, um, Bal Sansad uh, or the child parliament were introduced. Then uh, at the same time, we also find that, yes, uh, somewhere uh, an in, uh, uh, enabling environment is required within the school to ensure a sort of better uh, wash access. And for that operation and maintenance, uh, sustain operation is something that was really, really important. And we tried to focus around that. I mean, in terms of, as uh, uh, you have rightly mentioned, that uh, this is not something where only teachers and children should work. So we try to find out the sort of ecosystem which is really important to uh, uh, promote uh, uh, hygiene behavior within children. So we work with the concerned departments. We also work with the school management committees, as I mentioned earlier. Then, uh, of course, child parliament, children's, and teachers. So empowerment of teachers, engagement with children, and continuous and continued, uh, continued engagement with government functionaries at block level, uh, at BRC level, uh, uh, cluster resource center level, or even at district and state level. That was something that we prioritized. In terms of, uh, as, as Ravi has also mentioned, uh, that somewhere uh, uh, technology research uh, uh, is, is uh, really important and we need to adopt some new age uh, approaches to bring in sort of uh, behavior improvement. I would not use word behavior change but to bring in the behavior improvement. So what we did actually, we, we adopted a sort of behavior center design uh, uh, within, uh, within our program. Uh, uh, and, uh, and we worked at two levels. One is, of course, to, uh, to uh, empower the children, to empower the teachers uh, uh, on uh, improved hygiene behavior, but also at the same time, how we can actually create a sort of enabling environment uh, uh, within the school, how we can actually work uh, to, uh, to ensure that yes, we, uh, the schools have uh, tabs and toilets and hand washing stations uh, so that children do have access to wash services. So these are certain things where we closely work uh, with the government, we closely work uh, with other NGO partners as well as uh, with communities and districts. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, share uh, 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 much information uh, around uh, the access of uh, uh, wash facilities within within school because those are certain informations that is already in the public domain. Uh, but yes, we, uh, we try to dive down and, and try to understand what are the uh, limiting factors, the stumbling block, which is actually uh, sustaining the uh, which is actually sustaining the uh, overall. Uh, 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 sorry, uh, uh, sorry. I, I was some. Uh, there was some distraction there. I was uh, continuously getting a sort of call. Anyway, uh, so we try to understand uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, limiting factors which is hampering the overall uh, uh, sustainability part in terms of uh, in, in terms of uh, sustained operation and maintenance uh, in, in in school. What we found in certain studies, we then we did certain studies and we found that 55 percent surveys school didn't have any specific schedule for uh, uh, cleaning uh, uh, of a school uh, sanitation facilities. 85% of schools reported having no specific plan around uh, school, uh, uh, within school uh, around waste management. 75% of uh, uh, school reported not having enough funds to uh, manage consumables. We also tried to uh, actually understand uh, the uh, how this composite uh, 
fund that is going to school is being uh, uh, utilized and helping to sustain the wash facility. Then what we found that 60% of the school didn't have uh, adequate funds for uh, uh, sanitation. The schools with higher assets, I mean, in terms of uh, sanitation facilities or uh, uh, taps, uh, found it more difficult to uh, sustain uh, the expenses around consumables to uh, to have a sort of dedicated uh, manpower to manage, uh, especially sanitation workers to manage these facilities. Very few schools actually uh, could leverage support from uh, 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 other sources, for example, Fourteen Finance Commission or uh, local area development funds of elected representative. So these are uh, these are certain findings which has actually helped us to uh, next slide please. Yes, so these were certain uh, 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 insights that has given us, uh, uh, other than, of course, the behavior-related behavior uh, aspects. Other than behavior-related uh, aspects uh, uh, to, to design our school program. So we adopted a sort of three-pronged approach. One is to actually uh, engaging with uh, 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 the key stakeholders, to co-create and uh, develop certain solutions, and then in uh, coordination with uh, uh, local authorities, the local government uh, system, with communities and with the school, to scale up the program. Now, as Ravi has also mentioned, uh, uh, some of the best practices that emerged out of uh, this initiative, this whole concept of uh, soap bank. Because uh, in, in our studies, we found that yes, soap is availability of soap is something that is a limiting factor to ensure a sort of hand washing within the school. So this concept was introduced uh, where uh, not only uh, children, but also teachers and uh, even school management committees actually uh, uh, cooperated quite a lot, work, uh, uh, made a sort of coordinated effort to promote this. And now more than 2,000 soap banks uh, across different uh, schools are functioning well. In fact, in Bihar, I, I'm happy to share that uh, we have also constituted a soap bank network where that was joined by more than 400 schools and that is really working well. And uh, the, the, the whole concept of this network is to ensure a sort of sustained availability of soap within these schools. And for that, they are actually leveraging uh, local resources. Uh, crowdfunding is another part. And even during uh, birthdays or in uh, on special occasions, uh, soaps are being contributed by the uh, uh, families of the children. Then uh, nudges and cues were something that was introduced under this program. How children uh, uh, can be prompted towards uh, um, uh, adopting a sort of improved uh, hand uh, uh, hygiene. Then, uh, of course, one uh, one more concept that was uh, promoted under uh, our school hygiene program is this whole concept of hygiene corner. So we really find uh, this the, the concept of hygiene corner quite interesting. This was a place where uh, uh, child uh, members of child parliament, or what we call uh, uh, here, uh, just just give me a second. Hello. So, uh, uh, hygiene corner was uh, something uh, that was uh, uh, that was promoted across uh, schools, and that has given a sort of platform to children to interact with teachers, and also to really understand the whole science behind hygiene, to interact with uh, uh, school management committees. So that was a platform. Uh, it was a, a live. and uh, it was promoted by children itself. The other part uh, from, uh, from, uh, from our experiences are the technical support that was uh, uh, provided uh, to this uh, uh, initiative. So one is, of course, as Ravi has mentioned, this, this whole uh, concept of uh, school hygiene uh, 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 curriculum comprising uh, teaching learning aids uh, for primary graders. Then teacher's training was uh, also prioritized as part of uh, this initiative. Uh, then uh, again, So teacher's training was something that was uh, uh, prioritized uh, uh, under this uh, initiative. Then empowerment of school management committees uh, was another key component. Uh, and other than that, actually, what we did under this uh, initiative was uh, to uh, establish a sort of uh, school and community connect. And that is where the children, especially the members of child parliament, they drive the uh, uh, entire campaign. In fact, during first lockdown, what we saw that children along with their 
parents did uh, run a sort of fantastic digital campaign across uh, intervention villages. And, uh, and that was the moment where we also realized that yes, the kind of long-term and sustained hygiene education that was uh, uh, that was ensured within the school, how that has impacted to these children and how they have adopted it. And now during pandemic, they are reaching out to their peers, they are reaching out to different households. So that was I really- that uh, I would request you to please wrap up. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, I'll take another five minutes uh, uh, and uh, to wrap up. This. Next slide, please. I'll request you to wrap up quickly, Mr. Asad. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So we have we have adopted a sort of uh, communication approaches to drive uh, sustained hygiene behavior, and of course, interpersonal communication, digital communication, mass media was something that was. Uh, and, uh, sorry, just one second, Mr. Uh, Asad. Can everybody see the slides? I don't see the slides. Yes, yeah, slide is not appearing uh, on 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 the screen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so a uh, couple of more slides and then um, I'll take another two to three minutes to wrap up this presentation. Uh, uh, so at the end, uh, we also did a sort of uh, uh, social return on investment study uh, to gauge the efficacy of hygiene education program across both of these schools. And what we found that uh, there was a sort of huge return, uh, especially in terms of social return. It was uh, uh, for every one rupees that was invested, the program delivers a social return of almost 33 rupees. Uh, so what we found that 89% of students follow all necessary hygiene practices, 92% of children reported uh, sharing hygiene knowledge uh, within parents and families, 97% of teachers, teachers reported uh, 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 increase in their overall knowledge to impart hygiene education within schools and 92% SNC members actually prioritize hygiene and wash uh, uh, investment within the school. So that is the kind of impact that we could manage to uh, see uh, with this program. Uh, now, some of the learnings and uh, lessons definitely I would like to highlight here is uh, that direct engagement and collaboration with the school authorities and, uh, and the government uh, to leverage fund for uh, uh, for retrofitting and renovation of existing wash facilities, uh, regular supply of uh, soaps, routine disinfection and water testing, helps in streamlining hand washing with soap. The crucial role of development partners uh, 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 in providing technical assistance in, uh, uh, to school authorities is something uh, that we uh, we learned uh, during these four or five years. That our support has actually helped us to streamline not only not only uh, the uh, improved services within within schools but but also to a greater extent to create a sort of uh, um, a better uh, 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 interaction uh, uh, with with district authorities uh, then building capacities of teachers is something that is really really important and uh, 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 engagement with uh, uh, school management committees is another uh, part that that must be prioritized and additionally strengthening uh, strengthen capacities of teachers uh, panchayat members uh, 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 regular appointment of sanitation workers etc is important to streamline the operation and maintenance at the end uh, i would just say uh, that fortifying the good habits at the onset of uh, learning in children at a school can have the dual advantage of sustaining long term uh, behavior as well as uh, uh, reinforcing the habits uh, in their homes and communities. I would just uh, stop here and uh, maybe if there is uh, any questions, I'll be happy to uh, respond. No, no questions right now, uh, Dr. Asad, but we will bring them up uh, during the discussion. Uh, so thank you very much for sharing your experiences. I think what uh, points to be observed between Ravi's and Asad's uh, presentation are that they have both put children at the center of all activities, be it the curriculum development, the soap bank, child cabinet. And these are interesting approaches and they're very different approaches taken by corporates as well as NGOs. And there's opportunity for us to learn from them and reach out to them. Uh, so after listening to some experiences from India, now we go global and uh, it's my pleasure to invite and introduce a team uh, of uh, members who have joined us, but uh, I will introduce the moderator, Ms. Belinda Abraham to you. Thank you, Belinda, for joining us and being so patient. Uh, Ms. Belinda is an international development specialist with over 20 years of experience in WASH 
and education sectors in sub-Saharan uh, Africa and Southeast Asia. Uh, she has worked with UNICEF, GIZ, and a number of international NGOs in seven countries. So she brings uh, rich experience with her. She's currently based in Berlin, Germany, and supporting the Global WINS, which is the Global Wash and Schools Network uh, Secretariat, of which she'll be delighted to share more information with all of us. Uh, so over to you, Belinda, to uh, moderate the next session and um, uh, welcome Bella and other colleagues on my behalf to everyone uh, to introduce all of them to all the people present here. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. We're excited to be here this morning in Germany, of course, and this afternoon. And I'm glad that everybody was able to connect. So I think we're gonna go straight into the presentations um, with Dr. Om starting. And so Dr. Om, can you can share his presentation as I introduce him. Um, can we share Dr. Om's presentation? So Dr. Om is a public health expert and he will be doing a presentation with us this morning, or this afternoon. Um, he is a behavior change science, scientist. He's got more than 20 years a work experience in water and sanitation. He's worked in child health, behavior change, uh, immunization, food safety, disease surveillance, and H HIV AIDS programs. Uh, Dr. Ong is currently um, the senior wash manager with WaterAid based in the UK. And he's also leading the behavior change group with the Susanna Network. Um, he holds a PhD in, from the London School of Tropical Medicine in addition to two master's degrees, one of which is public health. But I do want to say that he will bring a lot to this session, I think following through with Ravi's presentations and uh, putting children center, he's going to share a little bit of some lessons learned from a water aid multi-country hygiene response program, which actually took place in 26 countries, but he's going to focus on an eight country study. Um, and it will look at messaging, motivational drivers, respective interventions. And he will also give some country specific examples. So Dr. Om, if you are available, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Belinda and, and Malini and colleagues uh, for organizing this fantastic uh, uh, webinar. Hope you can hear me and I can, I think to um, avoid any technical glitches, let me share my um, screen as well with the presentation. If that's okay, I can't see my other presentations here. So if you see the presentation, you know. I do. Uh, it was just coming up, so we'll let you. It's just coming up. Just let us know if it's coming. Yes, now it's up. It's up. Uh, so... Yes, the presentation is up. Beautiful. Okay, great. great. Um, is it moving? Um, it's the first slide. I think uh, Cheyenne is putting uh, up the so slide. We have over your oh, slide. oh, great. Oh, oh great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Um, great. So, um, yeah, so without without further ado, let me dive in. Um, I know I'm conscious I only have 10 minutes uh, time as well. So what I'm going to do, um, based on Watford uh, experience, Watford is an international charity. We are in 38 countries. Uh, our footprints in 26 countries where we actually work, including in India. We have responded COVID-19, primarily focusing on hygiene behavior change as key line of defense to COVID-19. So my presentation today are what are the learning that we have obtained from our hygiene response to COVID-19 all across those 26 countries. And I will then deep dive in eight countries where we have done the midterm rapid assessment to understand some of the, the, the scientific evidence as well. Can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, because of the limited timing, yeah, can we go to the next one? Yeah, because of the limited timing, what I would like to start with is the, my final slide, the learning, the five key learnings, the takeaway message to you. The learning, what, are, what has been the learning from our hygiene response to COVID-19? First, any hygiene behavior change response should be science and evidence-based. What does that mean? Your behavior change intervention should focus on disease-sensitive behavior. For COVID-19, for example, targeting only your one or two behaviors is not going to be enough. So we need to understand how disease transmit and what are the behavior that actually prevent that respective disease. For example, for COVID-19, hand washing with soap, wearing masks and maintaining physical distancing. Now with vaccines, four behavior has to go together. So target disease sensitive behavior. Second, it is important that any behavior change intervention are designed using theoretical framework 
or have a robust theory of sin. How behavior happens? What are the pathways through which you can achieve behavior change? It has to be there. Third, you need to have design principle. Who is your target audience? How are you going to implement it? How long? How frequently you are going to expose to the target audience? What are the specific behavior that you want to target? Your design principle needs to be ready. And in order to design your intervention, you need to do the context analysis. What are the determinants of the behavior? Understand those motivational drivers and really use a creative process. Creative process is a process through which you bring target audience and creative people together to design your intervention package to make it more emotional, attractive, and engaging. Second learning, we need to focus on people's emotions, motivations, change in behavioral setting and social norms. What does that mean? It looks like complicated. But behavior change, there are three levers for behavior change. One, any behavior change activity has to motivate people. Change the script in people's said why they should be practicing that those behavior. What are the benefits of practicing those behavior? And together with that, we need to make sure that the behavioral products, the facilities, hand washing facility with soap and water need to be in the specific locations where behavior happens. Not only that, in order to remind people at the exact location where behavior happens, you need to put visual cues, reminders, we call them nudge in a behavioral place so that your motivations trigger your brain and your body will present in that specific locations where behavior happens and your reminder will nudge you to go and wash the hands. This looks complicated. But then school settings is those settings where you can create a social desire, school student washing hands together. So creating, changing that social norms is quite important. Third, higher reach and frequent exposure with a trusted delivery channel is quite important. You need one of telling one, one of or telling people do this and that is not going to work. So you need to expose people multiple times with repeated frequency, but we using a trusted information channel. And maybe using celebrities or influencers, the, 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 the comedians, the artists, maybe your peers, respected people uh, into the package. When you design your assets, it, it has to be in local language. It has to be progressive. If you are dealing with pandemic like this, your asset has to be progressive. Just showing the same video again and again will create a fatigue. When people see one time, two times, three times, four times, four, fifth, fifth time you saw the same, it will create that fatigue. People will bore. They will be ignoring that. So rather you create a kind of uh, progressive assets that will reinforce, but make it more exciting. Fourth key message, you need to have, in order to do the behavior, you need to have behavioral products. So that means the behavioral product, the facilities has to be pre-designed. The technology needs to be in place with operation and maintenance plan in place. For example, we're talking in schools. In schools, ideally, you should be putting a permanent hand washing facility with operation and maintenance plan in place because hand washing does require refilling soap water every day. So you need to make sure that those are there and then you need to continuously monitor whether these facilities are being used, whether those points are in place. Finally, any intervention has to be inclusive. It has to be sustainable and there should be a partnership in place. And I, I was glad um, earlier hearing from Ravi and, and Asad that there are key partnerships happening with the private sector in India, primarily. So I think bring private sector on board to have um, uh, product innovation and scale implementation, work with the government at scale implementation. That is something that I think uh, the Malini was, was mentioning, which is, which is good. And then at the same time, if you are using a mass media, mass media followed it by face-to-face -face intervention is quite key in order to achieve the sustainability. So those are the five key messages I really wanted to communicate to you at the beginning of my presentation. And subsequent slide will be just to show you um, some, some, some glimpses how we, we actually managed to come up with this. Next slide, please. Yeah, I will start with the science and evidence-based hygiene campaign. As, next slide. As you can see here, what we when we designed our 26 uh, country hygiene behavior change program, we targeted 99 million population over a period of 12 months, focusing on multiple settings, including schools, we targeted five key hygiene behaviors since the beginning of the pandemic. No deviation from there. Hand washing with soap, wearing masks, maintaining physical distancing, stay at home. And then focus was on changing the behavior and placement of the behavioral products. We have used a, this, a specific theoretical framework. We call them behavior center design and theory of change. Um, uh, how intervention actually influence uh, the people's, how intervention actually change the behavioral settings and leading for behavior change and achieving, uh, reduce the suppressing the, the virus, right? So, and then our package, the behavior center design approach was starting from the assessment to the creative design, to the delivery and to the final evaluation, the thorough systematic approach. Go to the next slide. 
the, the second takeaway message was making it more emotional, right? Focus on people, emotions, motivation. So how do you come up with that? So our intervention at the beginning, try to uh, demonstrate how virus can transmit, the COVID can transmit from one person to another, how people can actually cope with that, kind of science on science behind hygiene, science behind hand hygiene and others. But then that wasn't enough. We knew that motivation needs to be there. So therefore, from earlier asset was focusing on the knowledge, then subsequently on to one motivational um, uh, insights using uh, affiliation, North Star and other motives. And subsequently, we try to make the progressive assets using artists, the comedians, uh, the celebrities, and those were actually um, then shown to the school students, followed it by house to, uh, the face-to-face -face intervention in schools and into the communities, exposing people multiple times. And the group handwashing facility, facility is something that creates a social desire. And together with these motivational assets, we have also put visual cues and reminders. And earlier, I am, I'm glad that any cues need to talk with the people. Poster doesn't talk with the people, colleagues. Let's not distribute posters, pamphlets, leaflets, not distribute caps and t-shirts. Those are out fashion. They, they are not going to change any behavior. Please do develop any hygiene intervention package that will talk with the people, that will motivate people, that create knowledge and reminds people in a specific locations. Let's not be use more traditional um, way of changing people's behavior. Let's be attractive. So visual cues and nudges, as you can see, even we have used cows just to just to tell people what's the what's the two meter distance looking like. If you are unable to read, if you are unable to reflect, you need to have those cues in place so that people can actually add on that. Next slide, please. Then um, yeah, in the next slide, I will, I just would like to show you one or two video because of timing. I think we may not have time, sufficient time to show all of them. So let me start with the India video. Can you go up, please? Can you click that, the next, yes. Can you click the India video first? Oh, I can't hear the sound. Can you please share with the sound, please? I think you need to reload the slide uh, with sound. Tooth powder ke bees bug se, biscuit ke dust pack or... Pata nahi kya hone wala hai. Corona virus ki badhti sankhya bhoot chinta janak hai. दीदी कहते दिनों बाद स्कूल जाना अजीब नहीं लगेगा अजीब बिल्कुल नहीं मैं तो बहुत खुश हूँ इस दौरान मैं तुम दोनों को स्कूल जाने को लेकर बहुत चिंतित हूँ पापा हमारे पास कुछ सुपर पावर होनी चाहिए जो मेरे सुपर हीरो की तरह हमारी रक्षा करे <laughs> काश ऐसा हो सकता <laughs> मेरे पास तुम लोगों के लिए एक सुपर पावर है ताकि तुम लोग स्कूल में सुरक्षित रह सको सुपर पावर क्या मम्मी हमें सच में सुपर पावर देंगी ये पहली सुपर पावर है मास्क मम्मी तुम भी यही पहनती हो ना जब okay, तुम दुकान पे बैठती हो हाँ uh, and all of these behaviors, people really need to know that, okay, these actually protects you, that assurance, right? They, can you do the next, uh, yeah, next, the Power 5 video, where you can see how we have used the celebration. Let us drive out COVID-19. Wash your hands with soap or sanitize often. Let us knock out COVID-19. Cover your nose and mouth. Mask up. Let us win against COVID-19. Call 909 if symptoms develop. Let us run out COVID-19. Keep your environment clean. Let us kick out COVID-19. Observe social and physical distancing. So this was power of five. So using five celebrities, those are athletics in Zambia to promote. Finally, one, this one is very, uh, I think, 20 second one. So let's, let's hear this. This is kids linked. Okay, I think I think the video was not playing well. Yeah, okay. So now you can see at least if you are showing any any video or any um, uh, audio, any drama or anything that has to link with the emotions, people emotions, how people uh, in order to change the script in the, into their head so that people can actually go for the, the, the behavioral actions. So go to the next slide. So I'm coming back now, narrowing down. Uh, so yeah, together with these motivation. So you need to build the permanent facilities with provision of water and soap, operational fan noises and cues. That was 
discuss part of the uh, thought uh, key takeaways. Let's go to the next slide. So finally, the what are the what are the findings that we, we came up with uh, from our um, uh, 26 uh, country response? So we have done the midterm rapid assessment. Uh, it was supported also by London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and Branas. Because of time, I'm not going to present every single digit. What I'm going to do is. Our response is 181 million population. We have installed 2,700 hand washing facilities and distributed 1.8 million hygiene products. And 93% people were being exposed and they knew that three BMS has to be performed. And then the top four motivational drivers were fear, North affiliation and pride. And fear has turned to the temporary stimulus because it's not going to long last forever, right? So therefore you need to have very small motivations. So the midterm rapid assessment results shows that majority of the people they knew that they should be practicing this behavior. And, they, and then more than 70% people said that they started practicing this behavior due to their exposure with intervention. Around 50% people all across four behaviors say, say that all the people into the village started practicing the same behavior by being exposed with the intervention. But when we did the subset analysis, you can see the hand washing after defecation and before feeding was significantly high in terms of reported behavior knowledge. But the other new hand washing critical moments due to COVID-19, when entering into the house after uh, being exposed after sneezing and coughing turned to be limited. So that insight gave us a further um, information that in our subsequent uh, ongoing campaign, we actually then fix our assets to focus on a specific critical moments linked with COVID-19. So it is important that just don't tell wash your hands. People need to know what is specific time and when they have to wash their hands. My final slide, can you go to the next? What are the motivational drivers? Previously, I think Malini and, and, and Ravi and others mentioned what are the motivational drivers people should know and should use into it. So our rapid assessment so that there are some behavioral predictors. For barriers, why people are not washing their hands, self-management, forgetting, too busy, access to water, wearing masks, self-management, again, forgetting, busy, availability of masks, physical distancing, inadequate space, cleaning surface, self-management. What are the motivational drivers? Fear was only motivational driver for hand washing, but not for other. For example, maintaining physical distancing, respecting to the community, believe that it protects uh, from the COVID. Those were the behavioral predictors to motivate people for washing hands. The, what are the predictors for creating social norms? The descriptive norms, why people wash their hands? Because if they see others are practicing the behavior, but that's not the same for wearing masks. For wearing masks, as you can see here, people, the injunctive norms, which is other people expect me practicing wearing masks, right? So it is important that when you promote this behavior, you need to know what sort of social driver that you are using. For hand washing, descriptive norms was good. For mask wearing and physical distancing is in injunctive norms that other people expect me practicing, therefore I'm practicing it. So therefore it is important that we understand these motivational drivers, the barriers and the social norms, part of the any behavior change intervention so that we actually use these while designing the intervention campaign. Um, go to the next slide. So with that note, I will conclude because I have limited time. I want you to flag a very global snapshot insight to you how we design, implement, and evaluate the behavior change program. But for detail, you can always visit Waterhead website. And we have office in one, Waterhead. Waterhead India is doing a fantastic work in India as well. You can always contact our uh, um, Waterhead India office there. And then you can also touch base with this email. Thank you very much. With that, uh, Belinda, back to you. Thank you. Great, Dr. Alm. That's fantastic. And I just got so much from it, really, because you talk about creativity, motivation, innovation that's required, um, the visual cues that are important, having trusted channels, influencers, we've seen how that can create superpowers, <laughs> uh, timing and the cues for behavior, the social drivers, so many things that came out of that presentation that you've even built on from the presentation that we had with Ravi and uh, Dr. Assad. So thank you, thank you very much. And I think there's a lot of interest in your presentation. So if we can make that available to others I see in the chat, um, but excellent work and really highlighting for us some of the things, building on the previous presentations on some of the things we need to take forward. So thank you so much. And I know you have to run, uh, but I will jot down the questions for you and we will um, forward the questions to you should they, we not be able to answer them. So thank you again so much for an excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Belinda and, and the entire uh, team. And thank you. Sorry, I have to rush it now.
Thanks. Okay, great. So next um, on the global stage is uh, two people, actually. It'll be Dr. Bella Muntz. She is a dentist by training, specialized in school health promotion um, and WASH in schools. And she's been focused a lot on policy and research. Since 2011, she has worked with the GIZ Fit for Schools, many of you will know this program, supporting the ministries of education to develop and implement, scale up effective school health WASH in school programs in Southeast Asia. And since 2016, Bella has also worked with the GIZ sector program, Sustainable Sanitation Alliance, and co-leads the working group, Washington Institutions with me. Um, she is also working with the program guidance on the Global Wins Partnership Network, which I'll speak a little bit more about. Bella holds a PhD in global oral health from Raboud University in the Netherlands. And she will be joined today by Ms. Leila. Ms. Leila is an analyst in, in the planning and evaluation department of the primary school ministry of education, culture, research, and technology of the Republic of Indonesia. And they will be speaking together today a little bit more about behavior change. We've talked about behavior change generally, but let's now focus on what are specifics in a school setting. And they're gonna show some research and some of the learnings from there. So with that, can I um, pass the global stage to Bella and Leila? Over to you. Yeah, can you hear me? Perfectly fine. Yes. Nice to okay. see you, Bella. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Belinda, for your nice welcoming words. And I thank uh, ASCII very much for inviting us to, uh, to this event. Uh, amazing how many, how much interest ASCII can, uh, can encourage everywhere. Uh, the team, Malini and team, thank you so much for all your great work you're doing. And we work together since many years, so we have good collaboration with ASCII since many years. So we're very happy working together. Uh, can somebody set up the presentation, please? Yes, thank you. I will speak very briefly about some aspects of school-based programs. And you can also see, I will briefly introduce some principles and uh, this is also being supported by the Hygiene and Behavior Change Coalition. Uh, as you know, this is the hand face based surface campaign uh, and which is supported by UK Aid and Unilever. We implement this program in the Philippines, Indonesia and Cambodia and um, Ms. Laila from the Ministry of Education Indonesia will show some practical aspects later. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, very briefly, I would like to let you know that we work with the ministries of education, WASH in schools program, we work with the ministries of education in certain Southeast Asian countries on the regular activities for schools, WASH in schools as to integrate them into everyday school life. And that means very clear having daily supervised group activities running which are, next slide, I will make it very short, which needs to have access uh, to toilets and hand washing facilities, access to soap so that you can do daily supervised group hand washing, daily supervised group tooth brushing, and a regular operation and maintenance as part of everyday school life. And as something which is integrated into the routines of the school. Same what uh, Dr. Om was presenting before, you have to have it integrated into the routines. And at the moment within this HBCC program, we integrate the hand washing also at the entrance of the school. So when you're entering the schools, hand washing has to be done, has to be done as part of a routine. So there is no need for everyone to make a decision, do I do hand washing or not? It is part of routine, everybody has to do that. Next slide. And we were very briefly looking at the following now, habit formation, what is habit? Habit formation is a learned automatic behavior 
that is triggered unconsciously by cues. For example, a habit is if you enter school now, there's a hand washing station, you automatically go and wash hands because that is part of your routine. That is already a habit. But the question always is, is this automatic routine also what you do in a group than when you do it individually? So that was the question we were following up and we looked at schools which do group hand washing, automatic hand washing as part of the routines and do the children in these schools have a better hand washing behavior when they go to the toilet. Next slide. So we checked. So we looked, as I said, schools which include group hygiene activities and compared them with schools which do not have group hygiene activities. If the group hygiene activities are influencing the independent hand washing after using the toilet. And we did it by weighing the soap and measuring the number of toilet events in toilets by infrared sensors, just seeing the amount of kids entering the toilets. Next slide, very short. What could be seen is we had per toilet event uh, 0 0.4 gram in the intervention, 0 0.3 gram in the control group. So there is a difference, but that difference is not significant. And what is to be seen is that this is, if you see the general in the literature, what you find is a hand washing needs 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 gram per hand washing event. This is quite high uptake in both groups, even it's a bit higher in the group, which do hand washing regularly at, as a group, there's still also quite high hand washing in those schools which do not have regular hand washing. So what do we learn from this? I mean, just to have clear provision of necessary infrastructure and consumable may already trigger behavior. Next slide, very short. So what are the conclusion? What we learn from this is behavior is very much based on settings. So the transfer, for example, of group hygiene activities into other contexts is not automatically happening. One cannot say because we always wash hands when we enter the school, that doesn't mean when a child is at home, they will also wash hands, for example, after using the toilet. It's very much in line with what Dr. Om said hand washing is much related to settings. And that's something we have to understand. And in general, to say the health of hygiene activities are very firmly established. That's true for hand washing and also for other hygiene behavior, toothbrushing, for example. And as children may not do that always at home, it's of utmost importance that these habits are really very well done and institutionalized in the school context. Next slide. So just to put this together, to have a sustained hand washing behavior in the school context, you need logistics, you need clear management tools. Management tools means there need to be a clear direction, a clear routine, what has to happen where. And school heads and teachers need to know what they have to do. And Ms. Laila will talk about that in her slides coming in. This will in become a routine which is integrated into the daily schedule of activities in a school. This will form the social norms in the school because it's a norm that you wash hands when you enter. It's a norm that you wash hands prior to eating. That has to become a norm in the school. And of course, never forget that hand washing is fun if you do it all together. So it's also important that the fun element is still there, that children like to do it. And with this, I will turn over um, to Ms. Laila, who will briefly explain how hand washing is institutionalized in schools in Indonesia. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Bella. Uh, let me continue the presentation. So in Indonesia, we try to strengthen hand hygiene behavior by some strategies, including develop management support tools for school, especially during pandemic COVID-19. In Indonesia, we issued joint for ministerial decree about learning guideline during COVID-19 
and it also regulate the school's obligation to fulfill school readiness checklist in conducting face-to-face -face learning. Uh, we also distribute hand washing facilities and supplies and provide a model implementation of measures in select schools. And this, of course, not only done by the Ministry of Education itself, but also in collaboration with GIZ. So thank you uh, for GIZ uh, for always be our partner in make our school um, become healthy and safe. And next slide, please. Yeah, there are some examples of booklets, poster, sticker, etc. that have been produced to give instruction to school for ensuring school health and safety, especially during face-to-face -face, uh, learning in COVID-19 pandemic period. Uh, we even conduct training directly to school. And in 2021, there are 780 schools who become a target of training. And we distribute uh, these materials to schools. We print it and we also upload it in our website. And of course, in compiling these materials, we receive, uh, we receive full support from GIZ. And yeah, thank you for GIZ. Next slide, please. Yeah, these are some of the things we come across when observing at school. Uh, first, print materials can trigger the student's curiosity. And the second is how student action can influence other friends to wash their hands. And the third is unique shape or attracting students to wash their hands. And last but not least, uh, we just know that children actually prefer liquid soap than bar soap. So perhaps this some um, finding, we know what steps we have to take. So there are more and more children who implement hand hygiene behavior. And we like to inform that on World Hand Washing Day in 2020, uh, with the support from GIZ, uh, we also carry out hand washing action simultaneously at Trocot Indonesia, and we got award from the Ministry on, of Health in Indonesia for this action. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you, Bella and Tim. Wonderful. Thank you, Leila, for giving us a little bit of a snapshot of the wonderful work that you are doing in Indonesia. And again, I think uh, what came out for me in the presentation is building on some of the things we talked about, about the creativity, the use of influencers, is the importance that this has to be done in a school setting. The school settings are specific. And even within the school setting, um, having things that um, are established to, to trigger um, behaviors and having the presence of soap and facilities there also triggers behavior. So thank you very much. So now to wrap up this session, um, if we can put on the slide on what is the WINS network? And um, I'm really pleased to share that with you now, uh, because if you found the presentations interesting that we've had, there's much more resources available in the WINS network. So if I can just ask the organizers to put that um, presentation on, it's Thank you. And as we're going there, um, the WINS Network is a collaborative, is it coming on? And no. Yeah, it's coming on. I think it is. Good, perfect. Yeah, so as I mentioned, more resources can be found globally. If you go into the WINS Network, we are a global interagency network and the contacts are there. And our main objectives are to support the harmonization of washing schools, as, as we call WINS. And in doing so, we are supporting the ministries of education, particularly to improve washing school services by aligning our efforts as development partners. So you imagine there's so many different approaches. How can we come together, share those approaches in a way that we can support ministry of education? And we have a number of working streams 
We have uh, streams that focus on policy and advocacy, streams that focus on monitoring and reporting, research and evidence building, some of the research that you still saw today will, will be found there, as well as guidance on WINS pro programming. And some of the work that I'm doing is supporting the development of knowledge management, capacity building, and uh, we have also learning exchanges. And actually the learning exchanges are one of the key annual events, which brings um, a good number of people, I'd say hundreds of people together actually to talk about WINS. In the last couple of years, they've actually been online. So who are our core members? As you can see, UNICEF, GIZ WaterAid, Joint Monitoring Program, Lummi School of Hygiene Tropical Medicine, Emory, and UNESCO. But you too can also be a member. You can join as an individual and you can also join as an organization. So you can um, click on the website and get details. And if not, you can contact us. But I would love to close the session just by again thanking ASCII and team, because I think this is exactly what the WINS Network uh, wants to do. We want to be able to share more. And by sharing more, collaborating more, we're inspiring that innovation, that creativity, and bringing more people to uh, wash their hands, but also take and be empowered to take control of their health. So thank you so much. And on behalf of the WINS Network, a Susanna Sustainable Sanitation Alliance, and all of the team today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Shan, can you pull the slide back? Yeah. So just uh, before we move into the next session, thank you, Belinda, for moderating the session so well, for your support. Just a couple of questions which uh, and observations which I thought were interesting, and I thought I'll throw it open to all the panelists who have spoken so far. Uh, first, of course, I'd like to appreciate one of the students who was there, Vaidehi. She says that she has taken it upon herself to teach um, safe hand wash to her parents. So every time they come into the house, she puts a coin-size uh, liquid soap in their hands and tells them to go and wash. Now, one of the children, uh, or uh, teachers actually, not children, she has mentioned, and this would probably be to Ravi, that uh, if you are to pick up a child celebrity for your communication campaigns, who would those child celebrities be? Because we, they're saying they're tired of seeing elders celebrities involved. Very interesting question, uh, Malini. If you, if you see our global campaigns as well as the campaigns in India, we have uh, regular children as the campaign ambassadors. We don't go for the celebrity kids. Every kid is a celebrity kid in itself. Him, her, or a you know binary. So I don't think so. That's a very cool idea to get a celebrity kid to do something. Okay. Same on the so, hand washing front about the elders too. Uh, like we have Amita Bachchan as a purpose ambassador for the program, but Detol as a brand or Lysol as a brand or Harpic as a brand has no brand ambassador. It's, it's, it's like ordinary people because it's for ordinary people. It's not for the special people. That's, okay. what, that's my you. solution. Thank you, thank you so much. There was a uh, observation for Ms. Leila, which said that, um, uh, you know, the points that she made about liquid soap being the preferred soap by children and peers as influencers are in line with uh, the understanding. This was by a district education official and they said that it's in line with their own understanding and they agreed with Ms. Lela. So thank you for that. One question for Bella, which has come up was in terms of the, uh, the infrastructure, which was shown the group hand washing infrastructure. They want to know if it is child, uh, uh, children with special needs can also use it, or is it all at the same level, the hand wash oh. station? Uh, in our, uh, in the Fit for School program, perhaps you've seen, we promote a lot the so-called wash a lot, which is a hand washing station that can be, it was also in the presentation, the, the slides Lila had, you could see this. This is something which can be used by adults and by children at any at any um, size. So uh, because it is a hand washing station which can be uh, which can be installed immediately everywhere, and it's uh, it's using very little amount of water and is able to serve different sizes of people. So it's 
I think also much appreciated to be used uh, very small children or also children with special needs. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. There was and a question. Have, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a question for Mr. Rome, but I think uh, maybe Belinda could take this. This was about uh, just a clarification question. I am not. I didn't get the name. Perhaps a uh, uh, educator. Uh, she wants to know if placing uh, posters across the school can be considered as a nudge action. Would that serve the purpose of nudging? Okay, so I'll do my best to, to uh, answer that, but I might even let Bella go into this. I think the point is, yes, I, I think as many use of different um, materials to get the message um, in is, is always a good thing. I think one of the things that has been said is consistency of messaging needs to be there so that you are saying it to that behavior. However, I think the point that he was underlying around the posters was that it is not enough. It is not enough to do a one time, put a poster here, do something there, it's not enough. It needs to be combined with a number of different activities to motivate. So a poster might help, but other ways to also encourage could support. Maybe I'll let Bella, even Robin. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's not very often schools say, yes, we have hygiene programs running and then they have a uh, poster somewhere and perhaps water and soap, or maybe not even. What is far more important is that you have regular parts integrated and the nudges will remind to the routine. So you need to develop a routine. Without development of routine, you will not get into hygiene behavior. It needs a clear routine to be developed. I think that's very important. And when we speak here about schools and specifically now within the COVID uh, situation of schools, it's very important to really establish clear routines and teachers need to be oriented what they exactly have to do. Therefore, sort of checklist systems are fine and nudges are, for example, posters, which will remind or uh, also a checklist is also served as a way of nudge to remind the teacher, aha, okay, I have to check this. So he sees the checklist hanging there and checks on certain things. And the checklist, for example, every day will then bring the new behavior will become automated after some time. But you need to repeat that very often. That's the point. And the checklist, for example, are there to introduce a new behavior. And cues are, you see the checklist, you remind it, ah, that's what I have to do. You see the mask photo and see, oh yeah, is my mask correct, yes or no? Now, not to have it under your chin, but wear it correctly. These are the things why you have the notches. Yeah. So I think some of the points, uh, thank you, Bella, for this, and Belinda, and uh, uh, others, uh, Leila, and Mr. Ohm. I think this sets the uh, tone for the next part of the session where we are transitioning into now learning from all these experiences, on-field experiences in India, as well as all the countries that we heard about today. How do we now go into designing effective behavior change quest, uh, communication? There are many questions in our mind. Do I design, how do I design, like Ragni has just put it in the chat room, how do I design a routine for outside school? Is designing a school uh, routine in school enough? Who takes care of this checklist? How do I get children involved in this process? So um, with that, I'm not going to speak here, but I'm going to bring in uh, uh, dear friend uh, Ragini Pasricha, the uh, director of content strategy at BBC Media Action in India. Uh, she comes with over 20 years of experience in uh, public health. She's worked on social and behavior change communication for a wide range of issues, uh, including gender, nutrition, and sanitation. Uh, she brings a vast experience with the public and private sector, specializes in system strengthening, and that's exactly what is the focus of her session. How do we because there are so many members in the participants, Ragini, who are here to set the systems and your guidance would be very timely. Uh, she supports BBC Media Action, of course, in uh, uh, globally in developing content strategies and uh, gender related input. So uh, Ragini, over to you. And we look forward to learning some of, about some of the principles that all members present here can adopt. 
uh, for designing effective behavior change communication strategies. Uh, Shayan, you might want to just pull up her slides and put it up whenever Ragini wants it. Uh, thanks, Malini. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, and thank you for including me in this absolutely fascinating discussion. Uh, Sain, if you can have my slides, let's dive deep into it. Uh, so for starters, uh, let's look at the, I'm going to ask you to revisit the context. And I think one of the first principles that we have to look at is in the context of hand washing, the context is that non compliance with hand washing, non compliance with hand hygiene recommendations is pervasive, not just among children, but also among adults. You know, there are studies that have shown that 31% of men and 65% of women do not wash their hands after using a restroom, a public restroom. So going from there, can I ask you to move to the next slide, sir? Look at some of the findings that Malini shared with us. And I'm going to ask you to take a closer look at these findings because one of the first principles of designing an effective behavior change campaign is to use research, as Ravi said, as Dr. Om Prakash said, but to interpret it correctly to understand your audience. The number one principle is to understand your audience. The better you do that, the better you will be able to communicate with that audience. So what we see is that there are children who do not believe that they have germs on their hands. They have already made a decision based on that understanding. They have made the choice to not wash their hands because they did not think they have germs on their hands. And I want you to focus on the words, made a decision, made a choice. Because finally, all behavioral interventions are intended to influence the choices that people make. Now you look at the top line findings again, with the recognition that children are developing social and cognitive skills and they lack self-control. You know, there are various studies that tell us that this level of impulse control is not achieved till we are into our thirties. So to an audience of, you know, people who are immersed in education, this teaching of self-regulation is a very important part of children's socialization. Because now we are not talking about hand washing just in the context of, you know, before you eat and after you have used the toilet, it is making it routine in the context of the pandemic. So self-regulation is both emotional, it's also behavioral, and it's not just about having the willpower to control an impulse. It is about strategies. You have to learn how to control an impulse in order to meet a higher social goal, a higher level goal. As people who design a campaign, we have to turn to researchers, we have to look for teachable moments and acknowledge the challenge there is. You know, there is a challenge because the child needs to make a choice and the child needs to have a plan. They need to have a set of options and a kind of reasoned decision about hand washing. That's if you're looking at hand washing from a psychological perspective. But if we think of it as a habitual behavior, which is where Bella pointed us, ha habitual cleaning practices are strongly correlated with the cleaning practices of the family and especially the mother. So let's take a quick look at the work that you know, the school intervention has done. Uh, Kavita, will you put up a question on the Mentimeter? Is there time for that? Yes, of course. Not on Menti, we have polls. Yeah, sure. So, uh, will you put up yeah, a question? Can put the up the next poll, please. Uh, yeah, he's doing it. Just a second.
you want to read it out ragini sure so the question is that you know you have the results of the survey that malini conducted why do you think we have failed to make children practice hand washing consistently did we fail to engage them did we fail to motivate them did we fail to create the ability to do so and what i'm seeing is that the majority of you think that it was the failure to motivate 54% 55 think that it's a failure to motivate 17% on engagement and right now about 26% on ability uh we're going to examine these thank you for that i think we've got a fair idea of where our audience is uh will you show me the next slide please uh so that we can take a look i'm going to analyze these terms a little more with you uh let's begin with motivation and self regulation these are two possible approaches we'd be looking at uh motivation involves the increased intent the you set a goal for yourself as an individual and there's the planning the increased self efficacy that is involved if people have to self regulate on this issue the next slide please now let's get into the science you know in bbc we talk often about the science art and craft of campaign design and the science of it very much involves research and behavioral sciences in order to increase a behavior any behavior to the level of sustainability because that's what malini asked us to consider that how do you sustain hand washing behaviors we need to consider three elements and those three elements are motivation ability and triggers and we need to increase at least one of these now this is where i'm going to give you a word of caution please do not try to manipulate all three elements at the same time it's too much to do just let's spend a bit of time with these elements when we talk about motivation we are talking about you know sensation is hand washing pleasurable is it painful you know does a child have to interrupt something really important that they want to do in order to hand wash when they do this behavior does it generate hope or fear you know do you feel that oh god if i don't do this i could get covid or do you feel i'm doing this now i'm going to be safe there's emotion attached to almost every behavior that we practice or is there belonging so you know does this hand washing create social acceptance or does it create rejection remember that earlier on in the presentations i think it was dr om who spoke about norms but when we talk about knowing our audience and about you using research well this is the kind of understanding that what emotion does it evoke in children when we talk about ability does it take a lot of time does the behavior require a lot of money does it require significant physical effort does it require significant mental effort i have to force myself to do this is it a strange behavior am i simply unused to you know washing my hands all the time is it non routine because really the level of hand washing required during the pandemic is non routine in the sense that many of us were taught hand washing in pre pandemic times so we need to be thinking about hand washing from a child's perspective in terms of motivation and ability and then we come to triggers so now what is a trigger any stimulus that impacts behavior is called a trigger in behavioral science a trigger is the call to action it literally tells you do this action now yeah so triggers can be verbal they can be non verbal when we talk about non verbal triggers think of you know just a smell that reminds me of you of your mother's cooking 
you know, triggers can be direct. A child runs in front of your car and you slam the brakes, or it can be indirect. Uh, you see a family photograph and you're reminded, oh gosh, I have to call my sister. Now, I'm going to let you into a secret. Very often, all that we need to do is to focus first on the triggers. You increase the number of triggers and the effectiveness of triggers in order to achieve the desired outcome. So the trigger is your call to action, remember? That's what tells a person, do this action now. If the trigger does not work, then you go to ability and perhaps last of all to motivation because motivation is the most nebulous element, especially when it comes to routine behaviors like hand washing for which there is no great psychological reward. Can we move to the next slide? Yeah. So let's take a quick look at strategies. I think we need to begin with the recognition that children are in school only for five or six hours. If we are looking at hand washing as a habitual behavior, this habit needs to be modeled and reinforced at home. So I'm going to ask you in fact to consider not just looking at a school-based intervention, but including a family focus and you know, create a multi-component intervention. Teach the children at school and then teach them at home. So reach out to parents, to grandparents, to caregivers. And we already know that you know, parents, especially the mothers, exert a very high level of influence. So their involvement is key to sustaining hand washing behaviors. It's, it's a very kind of a complex relationship of parental involvement, uh, you know, all the barriers to behavior change, the strategies, the treatment interventions employ, and the behavioral outcomes that we are wanting to achieve. Uh, I also think that, you know, this role modeling of parents, the restructuring of a physical environment, all of these need to be, you know, to have those sanitation stations, the hand washing stations, all of these are very important to sort of holistically consider when you're trying to influence hand washing behaviors. Uh, I think the superhero badges really matter. Uh, I, you know, I cannot stress enough how much children love a challenge. And just lecturing at them or treating it like an educational effort uh, works not as effectively as gamifying hand washing. Children respond to a challenge. So you develop games, you develop activities, you have the superhero badges and characters. I, I strongly recommend not punishing children when they forget. Uh, we don't want to scare them and we don't want to create a lot of anxiety, but to reward them, to make them part of the solution, to keep them excited about this is critical. And with older children, we can even teach them to look at the data. So we are not talking germ theory at them. They're discovering it. Discovery and emotion are key to good campaigning. And perhaps we could motivate children to help their families. And with that, can we come to my last slide? Actually, Kavita, I'm going to ask you to pull up one more question. And then I'm going to ask you to show uh, the film that we made, the hand washing film. So the question that I have for you is that in order to create an effective hand washing campaign uh, for school children, what would you want to know? Would you want to know what engages children, what motivates children, what challenges them, what triggers are needed? And when I say triggers are needed, you can even think about what platforms those triggers need to be placed on. 
you know, are you looking at posters? Are you looking at, you know, some other, there, there could be many other things that, you know, suggest themselves. So the challenges are something that I see the biggest number of this group responding to, that you would want to know, you would want research to tell you what challenges children when it comes to hand washing. And the second biggest group wants to know what motivates children with just about 15 and 11% wanting to know what engages children and what triggers are needed. Interesting, because engagement is your first point. Engagement is your number one point. If you don't engage the child, then how will you motivate them? How will you create ability? How? So engagement to my mind is the very first step, but yes, of course, then the rest has to come in. Kavita, can we have the hand washing, sir? <laughs> Poor hand. It does what it does and turns into this coronavirus. <laughs> You give me 20 seconds, and I will give you freedom from this virus. Take this! And this! <laughs> Go away! From every corner, from every side, just get lost! Victory! See you many times every day. Thanks. Uh, this is a film that we made at BBC Media Action and I wanted to share it with you because it makes two points very simply. This was a film, of course, that was made post pandemic. And uh, it makes two very simple points that if you don't wash your hands with soap, your hand becomes the virus. And the superhero that can save you is soap. Just two points, right? And with that, can we have the last slide? Because I think we pretty much, the last slide, not this one, not the film again. Yeah. So the most basic principles of designing an effective campaign are knowing what appeals to your audience. And by that, we have to be compelling, we have to be persuasive, we have to understand where they are coming from. The second is simplicity and focus. Uh, so there's a very famous saying that focus demands sacrifice. And I think giving people something really simple and doable to do and being unifocused in what you say to your audience is critical. If you try to say too much and do too much, you could lose half of what you intend. Keep your messages very focused, create engagement, create repetition, and then monitor. It is critical that you monitor and understand what worked, why it worked, what did not work, and how can you improve it and make those informed adjustments. So that's it from me. And I hope you found this helpful. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Rajini. Thank you so much. I think some great takeaways for all the administrators here uh, and educators here. Of course, the biggest one seems to be, for me at least, is how do you uh, develop programs which can be implemented not just in the school setting, but also outside the school, uh, particularly in the home setting. Uh, another interesting point for all of us to sort of mull over is, uh, you know, the point that Ragni made about what is the psychological reward for hand washing. Uh, I'm not sure if this would change from context to context or state to state or rural to urban, but it's a very important question for all of us to think that why should, what, what is the motivation, why should a child do this? 
and then work around that to uh, develop a, a program and communication uh, campaign around it and structure it around that. So thank you very much, Ragni. And uh, we'll, everybody loved the video that you played. So that's a quick feedback for you. So uh, with that, we go now to the next part of the session, which is uh, uh, built beautifully from where uh, Ragini leaves us, which is uh, uh, what motivates children and how do children think? Uh, and uh, we have Mr. Nishit here, Mr. Nishit Kumar, who's a founder and managing director of Center for Social and Behavior Change Communication. This is a center that is focused on developing and implementing uh, evidence-based social and behavior change communication solutions on various issues, uh, including uh, sanitation. So he has worked extensively on um, uh, understanding children and their behaviors. He has comes with more than 20 years of, uh, more than 41 years of experience, 20 uh, years of which is in um, development sector, uh, an advertising man, he knows the pulse of the audience. Uh, he's developed award-winning films and communications for Childline, uh, which won several national international awards. Uh, and we are grateful that he uh, accepted our request and uh, uh, to share some of his experiences and work with us. So uh, thank you, Mr. Nishit, and over to you. Thank you and namaste to everyone. I'm going to share my screen. I want to make only three points, uh, which are which I feel are very critical for everyone to understand when developing communication for WASH uh, in order to achieve behavior change. Teen cable teen point me bolna chata hon aap sabko. Pehla jo point hai, wo ye hai ki aap sochiye ki bache kaise sochte hain. How, do, how does the child's brain work? Everybody in science tells us that about 90 to maybe 95% of the brain is developed by five years of age. But there is a significant portion of the brain that develops well into late uh, adolescence, the early teenage and, and early adulthood. And that part of the different, uh, brain which develops later makes a lot of difference. How, does, how do children's brains work? First of all, children's brains use a part of the brain called the amygdala, which is at the back of the brain. Amygdala is associated with emotions, impulses, aggression, and instinctive behavior. Jo hamare dimaag ka jo pichla hissa hai, usme uske sa juda hua hai emotion, impulse, uh, instinctive behavior, impulsive behavior. Or usse paida hota hai risky behavior, impulsive decisions, more and stronger emotions. This is a clear uh, uh, pattern when we look at children's brains ko dekhte hai, and when we compare it to adult brain. Adult brain ka jo, jo hissa hai, prefrontal cortex, this is the decision-making part of the brain, responsible for the person's ability to plan and think about the consequences of action. If I do this, what will uh, uh, impact it? What will impact it? What will impact it? It's, it helps them solve problems and controls impulses. Prefrontal cortex, which is developed in the past 17 or 18 years, and it is mature in the past 25-26 years. So, this is an important thing because this prefrontal cortex is the rational decisions. In the past, brain is the part underdeveloped, hota hai, matlab ye developing ho raha hai, ye unka jo decision hota hai, wo amygdala jo piche, dimaag ka piche wala hissa hai, usse hota hai. This is an important thing, jo prefrontal cortex hai, whether it is the ability to balance short term rewards with long term goals, uh, foreseeing and weighing possible consequence of behavior, shifting, adjusting behavior when situations change, focusing attention, organizing thoughts and problem solving, in the prefrontal cortex, our brain ko 
को ताकत देता है ये सब करने के लिए इसीलिए एडल्ट्स को जब हम रैशनल कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस देते हैं कि अगर आपने मास्क नहीं पहना अगर आपने हैंड वॉश नहीं किया तो आपको कोरोना वायरस लग सकता है क्योंकि कोरोना वायरस ऐसे फैलता है दिस इज अ रैशनल वे ऑफ सेइंग हाउ कोरोना वायरस स्प्रेड्स एंड दिस इज गुड व्हेन यू आर यूजिंग टॉकिंग टू एडल्ट्स फिर बच्चों के साथ कैसे काम करें हाउ डू वी टॉक टू चिल्ड्रन और प्रीवियस स्पीकर ऑलरेडी गिवन यू वेरी गुड गाइडलाइंस टू वर्क विद चिल्ड्रन मैं कुछ आपको एग्जाम्पल दूंगा हमारे पास हमारी संस्था में एडोल्स इन मेंटल हेल्थ के बारे में जो एट नाइन टेन स्टैंडर्ड्स के बच्चे होते हैं जिनका जिनको स्ट्रेस होता है एंगजाइटी होता है डिप्रेशन होता है यू you नो know, आपको मालूम है कि इंडिया में हर घंटे एक टीनेजर सुसाइड करते हैं तो ये जो जो लेवल ऑफ स्ट्रेस इन बच्चों में होता है उसके बारे में उनको कम्युनिकेट करना या चाइल्ड सेक्शुअल अब्यूज के बारे में छोटे छोटे बच्चों को कम्युनिकेट करना बगैर उनको डराना तो ये सब हम अलग अलग चीज करते हैं कुछ उदाहरण मैं आपको देता हूँ एक तो डोंट्स डूज एंड डोंट्स मैं आपको बताता हूँ क्लियरली आपको पहले भी स्पीकर्स हैं ऑलरेडी बोल चुके हैं बट आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू आई एम गोइंग टू जस्ट से द की पॉइंट्स नो एडल्ट टॉकिंग डाउन इवन चिल्ड्रन हैव सेड दे डोंट वांट टॉकिंग डाउन दैट मीन दे डोंट वांट अ पेरेंट चाइल्ड कॉन्वर्सेशन डोंट डू दिस डू दिस दे डोंट वॉन्ट टीचर टॉक इफ यू डू दिस दिस विल है दे डोंट वॉन्ट टीचर टॉक दे डोंट वॉन्ट नेगेटिव पॉजिटिव इज वॉट इवन द प्रीवियस स्पीकर no rational explanations by adults what do they want give them responsibility and leadership tell them you convince your 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 parents you convince your class uh, uh, your students in your class you know make them influence adults emotional messaging emotion works beautifully all the previous speakers have said this you know i'm just repeating that over here song and dance children love song and dance give them song and dance reward for positive behavior what is the reward for positive behavior Okay, uh, so I will show you some examples of how we uh, can do that. जो enemy को brand करें, जैसे अभी दिखाया BBC के film में enemy को brand करना बहुत एक अच्छी बात है. उनको आप सिर्फ उनके जो technical नाम है, वो बोलोगे तो SARS, COVID, virus, ये सब बोलोगे तो it doesn't work. You have to give them animation. उसको action करिए brand, action को brand करिए. जो action हो रहा है, उसको भी brand करिए. वो भी मैं आपको बताने वाला हूँ कैसे होता है वो. competitions work children go to school and very quickly learn that in a class in a classroom in a class between classes there is competition between children all the time that's one of the contributions schools does to to children it makes them aware of the competition in real life when they leave school so competition is a good thing you know use influencer group agar aapko adolescent se baat karna hai to teenager se baat kariye if teenagers behave in a particular way adolescents pick it up fast If adolescents, uh, you know, uh, behave in a particular way, smaller children, eight, nine children, they pick it up much faster. So use influencer groups uh, for uh, for your communication. हमने ये कैंपेन किया था फेक मत मुंबई ये मुंबई में स्वच्छ स्वच्छ भारत का अभियान के अंतर्गत हुआ था C I I और Mahindra and Mahindra ने हमें हमें अप्रोच किया था हमने 400 स्कूल में उनका ये उनका वो चाहते थे कि लिटरिंग जो है कचरा फेंकना कहीं पर भी इसको कैसे बंद किया जाए तो हमने उसके ऊपर रिसर्च किया और हमने कहा कि जो बच्चों में अगर एक बार आप बिहेवियर चेंज कम्युनिकेशन के द्वारा बच्चों के मन के अंदर एंटी लिटरिंग लिटरिंग बिहेवियर करा दो तो इट विल स्टे विद देम फॉर लाइफ तो हमने मल्टीपल प्रोग्राम्स उसमें किए चार स्कूल में हमने किया उसका इसका इफेक्ट इतना स्ट्रॉन्ग था कि बहुत सारे स्कूल सेकेंड ईयर थर्ड ईयर में वापस हम हमारे पास आए कि आ, हमारे स्कूल में ये साल भी करिए आप प्रिंसिपल रोड टू अस दैट दे हैव नेवर सीन द स्कूल क्लीनर यू नो देन आफ्टर दिस प्रोग्राम एंड फॉर मंथ्स आफ्टर दैट सिक्स मंथ्स एट मंथ्स आफ्टर दैट द इम्पैक्ट वॉज वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग सो वी यूज मल्टीपल मेथड्स एंड टेक्निक्स एंड आई शो यू सम ऑफ दिस टेक्निक्स वी यूज दिस बैचेज इको कमांडो इको कैप्टन हमने ये बैचेज बना के uh, हमने क्या किया एक स्कूल uh, में एक टीचर और uh, हर क्लास में से दो uh, बच्चों और जो स्कूल के जो सैनिटेशन वार्ड के जो uh, uh, जो कर्मचारी हैं उनको बुलाए उनके साथ वर्कशॉप किया फिर हमने ये दो बच्चों को इको कमांडो इको कैप्टन का बैच दिया और वो ये बैच हमने मेटल पिन बना के दिया तो व्हेन दे वेयर दिस एंड गो देर इज इनोमस प्राइड और हमारा जो पूरा मैसेजिंग था उसमें बच्चे जो थे पॉजिटिव मैसेज करते हैं आई डोंट लिटर आई नो इट विल स्प्रेड डिसीज As a responsible individual, this is what I do. और ये जो बच्चों जो इस कार्यक्रम में पार्ट लेते हैं 
उनको हमने सर्टिफिकेट्स दिए दिस सर्टिफिकेट्स वॉज इनॉमसली पॉपुलर विद पेरेंट्स पेरेंट्स लव दिस आइडिया दर आर चिल्ड्रन आर गेटिंग सर्टिफिकेट फॉर गुड बिहेवियर यू नो सो दिस दिस थिंग वर्क हमने एक एंथम क्रिएट किया बच्चे लोग की जो कोग्नाइटिव फैसिलिटी है आपको मालूम है कि uh, हम कभी किंडर गार्डन में सीखा हुआ नर्सरी राइम तो नहीं भूलते हालांकि पांचवी या छठी क्लास में जो हम पोएम सीखते हैं वो हमें याद नहीं रहता सो वॉट इज द डिफरेंस मोस्ट ऑफ दोस्ट सॉन्ग्स यूज वन टू नोट ओनली टू नोट वन एंड टू नोट ओनली वी क्रिएटेड दिस लिटिल फिल्म टेक अ लुक एट दिस फिल्म एक दिन क्यों आज से क्यों नहीं हेड ये एक ये फिल्म में आपने देखा कि हमने एक पॉपुलर पेट्रियोटिक सॉन्ग है विच विच इज देयर इन बोथ लैंग्वेजेस इंग्लिश एंड हिंदी उसको लेके उसके म्यूजिक के ऊपर हमने लिरिक्स को अडेप्ट किया बट वी पुट चिल्ड्रन एट द सेंटर ऑफ इट एंड वी बिल्ड बिल्ड पॉजिटिव मैसेजिंग अराउंड इट एंड वी शो चिल्ड्रन गाइडिंग एडल्ट दिस इज समथिंग चिल्ड्रन लव इन मेनी स्कूल अक्रॉस मुंबई वेन दे हैव द एनुअल डे परफॉर्मेंसेज वॉट वॉट चिल्ड्रन डिड वॉज they they created a dance they choreographed a dance to set to this song so uh, this is very popular event in almost all almost uh, of the 400 schools i would say about 50% of schools had this kind of an uh, you know event translation so it internalizes a message very effectively hand washing ka jo message hai humne pichle saal maharashtra mein kareeban 22 community radio stations sath roz humne 8 mahine ke liye programming kiye बहुत सारे हमने कम्युनिटी बारह डिस्ट्रिक्ट ने कम्युनिटी के साथ प्रोग्रामिंग किए तो हमने एक उनको एक तरीका दिखाया मैं आपको एक मिनट के लिए शेयर कर रहा हूँ पॉज कर रहा हूँ ये ये दिखाने के लिए देखिए मैं आपको दिखाता हूँ हमने दिखा बताया उनको कि सोप साबुन हो या साबुन हो या सैनिटाइजर हो हमने उनको सुमन म तरीका दिखाया सुमन म तरीका सिंपल है सीधा उल्टा अंगूठा मुट्ठी यानी मनगता मनगता इज इन महाराष्ट्र को कलाई तो ये सिंपल टेक्निक हमने उनको सुमर में जब मैं जब मैं छोटा था करीबन थर्ड स्टैंडमेंट था तो मेरे साइंस टीचर ने हमको पढ़ा रही थी यू नो फलक्रम वेट और पुली के बारे में और मुझे थोड़ी कठिनाई हो रही थी पढ़ने वो समझने में तो उन्होंने मुझे एक फ्रेज बताया कि फ्रांस वॉज पावरफुल उन्होंने कहा कि ये आप याद रखो उसके बाद में कभी नहीं भूलोगे तो दिस डे आई आई स्टिल रिमेम्बर सो ब्रांडेड ब्रांड दी एक्शन ब्रांडिंग दी एक्शन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इट हेल्प्स टू इंटरनलाइज द मैसेज बाय लिंकिंग इट टू अ सिंपल इधर अ सिंगल वर्ड और 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 अ निमोनिक सो क्रिएट अ ब्रांड एंड दैट हेल्प्स चिल्ड्रन इंटरनलाइज एंड दैट इंटरनलाइजेशन स्टेज फॉर लाइफ सुमन मा तरीका इज व्हाट वी यूज यूनिसेफ यूजेस इज इन महाराष्ट्र you know uh, and in you know you can create similar words uh, out of the actions for your this thing yeah so what can we do i mean you've all heard all the previous speakers tell you what you can do 
uh, but in very simple terms, uh, you know, uh, you need to have school program. You need to have it delivered in classrooms. The school classrooms, of course, now many states uh, have gone back to online because of the of the third uh, wave. But uh, a school classroom is, uh, in a sense, a, a place where children are already psychologically groomed to come and learn. And they wear a uniform, they sit at tables, a teacher stands up so that guru shishya principle is maintained. You know, uh, so the, the psychologically they're tuned to learn. So this is good. You can use NSS volunteers trained. We've done both. NSS volunteers have worked with us. College students have worked with us. You know, uh, in one in for an adult uh, adolescent uh, mental uh, health program, jo, uh, eight nine standard ke bachon ke liye hai. We had uh, college teenagers, first year students, uh, do a song. You know, uh, we created a song from uh, the Nazaria song. We created their lyrics and created a song and dance. And the students created a, a choreographed dance to rhyme it with the dance that is done uh, at uh, at uh, during the Dashara festival in Bombay and Gujarat. So, uh, so they use that. Uh, you know, it you must have a school such such a module. What is that module? It must have a name. It must have a presentation. It must have class assignments. It must have discussions. You know, create a wash anthem. You can either create an anthem for hand wash or you can create an anthem for wash. But you know, I, I would suggest do it for hand wash. Create an create an anthem. Create a, 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 appoint student leaders. Give them a badge. Give them leadership role in teaching other children. You know, and that will work. You know, uh, competitions are very good. Most most schools anyway do these competitions. They're very good, and they're a good addition to regular competitions that happen in the this thing. Inter district school competitions. Some of the most competitive uh, sports happens when two schools compete with each other in a city. That's some of the most, I mean, children are passionate, they're emotional, you know, uh, that kind of uh, thing captures. So raise the level of competition or make it into, making it into schools, you know. Create a pledge. Let children take a pledge. Pledge is very good. Pledges are good. We've created pledges for so many things and it works. Give them a certificate. So these are some of the things that you can do. Remember one thing, as everybody has pointed out to you, Behavior change is a process. You have to segment your your uh, your uh, 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 audience using a socio-ecological framework. You have to communicate to all segments in the socio-ecological model. That is, the children plus the parents, the community, the you know the bigger community, then the the at all levels. And you need to segment the audience in terms of people who are unaware, aware, concerned, knowledgeable. And you need to use engagement. You know, the previous speaker also talked about engaging children first. Engagement is important. Education is important. Empowerment is important. You know, and finally, you must have recognition and reward when they do positive behavior. Remember that one of the key things we lack in, in our country is that we don't create the ecosystem that is necessary. You know, a friend of mine posts every day from, from Cochin about the dirt on Marine Drive over there, which is a tourist spot. You know, and and he moans, bemoans the fact that I've written so many letters to the ministers and to the BM uh, municipal corporation for putting a wastewater basket. They don't put it. If you don't have a wastewater basket, what will people do? They'll throw it on the road. They'll throw uh, things or little things on the road. Similarly, disposable sanitation, sanitizing liquid pouches. These are very critical. They are available. They are simple. Uh, they are easy to pack in school bags. They are easy to pack, put in a lunch box. You know, and 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 guide the children to use it. Uh, you, your ecosystem must be robust for behavior change to become a regular habit. If it is not, if your ecosystem lets you down, behavior change will never be sustained. So uh, that is what I have got to tell you all. Thank you so much. Namaste. I have some other examples to show you, but uh, because of I was told that we have only 15 minutes for this uh, presentation, I'm not showing you, but uh, if there is time later, I can all show you some more examples. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Nishit, for bringing all the discussion that we've had since uh, the start of the webinar together so beautifully and into such actionable, practical ideas, uh, which I think all the administrators and school uh, educators can implement uh, immediately. Also, these are very much aligned with uh, the Swachh Bharat, Swachh Vidyalaya uh, uh, guidelines. And uh, I think in the light of the new uh, Swachh Vidyalaya Puraskar Awards uh, supposed to be announced this month, 
uh, members present here would uh, take advantage of all the discussions we've had because behavior change has been a weak link uh, in the uh, Swachh Vidyalaya Puraskar uh, applications from schools and uh, uh, states. So uh, thank you very much for uh, your presentation, sir. And uh, to all the participants, we would be sharing uh, the presentations and videos after uh, checking with our speakers. We will reach out to you through an email. So then you can remove the slide deck, please. Uh, from the previous presentations, Ragini, if you are around, there was one question for you. Um, uh, this was from Ms. Swarnalatha. She wanted to ask, because you mentioned that one should look at triggers. So she wanted to ask you that, According to you, which triggers, uh, based on your experience, which triggers will have more impact? Uh, triggers need to be, uh, you know, when you segment on audiences, as uh, Nishit Kumarji just explained to you, you will understand what triggering is needed, where and when. So there is no generalized list of triggers that I can offer to you. The triggering needs to happen at the moments when people tend to forget. So, for example, if we talk about the immunization campaign, it's the third DPT that has the worst compliance. Triggering is needed at that point. So that, that's how you have to think of triggers. So rather than a standardized list that you put, does that answer your question? I hope it does. I hope so. She was, uh, she's listening to us from YouTube. There are almost uh, 2,000 members there. So this question was there. So uh, I'll allow my uh, team member to come back in case there are follow-up questions on that. Thank you, Ragni, and thank you, Mr. Nishit. Um, so we go to the uh, finale session of today's program. Uh, while we have discussed now uh, everything from uh, concerns, uh, trying to understand how students uh, think, trying to find um, what motivates them, uh, and then trying to see how different communication campaigns have been structured and what were their, um, uh, what was the impact thereof. Uh, and with Ragini and Mr. Nishit's uh, session of how one should approach designing communication campaigns, we now move on to a very, very important aspect of communication, which all the speakers have referred to. But uh, I feel um, our next two speakers would be able to uh, speak about it and present some uh, concrete structure with examples of how do we become creative? Because it's very easy to say we have to be interesting. We have to have creative. Uh, we should uh, involve children. But it's very difficult for someone who, say, a math uh, professional and is working with children and would like to be involved in uh, hand wash to figure out how creativity can be brought in uh, to promote and sustain um, a behavior change. So our next session is on creativity and the power of art uh, as a means of bringing behavior change. And for that, I welcome our two uh, speakers, Ms. Priya and Ms. Sunayana from One Drop Foundation. Uh, One Drop Foundation uh, works in India, Ms. Uh, Priya's uh, is leading it and her focus is to co-develop and co-design and support implementation of community-led water and sanitation projects. She aims to unpack the complexities of gender and social inequalities while moving towards concrete steps to address them. The core of her work lies at the intersection of art, community participation and wash system strengthening. I'm also very um, honored to introduce Ms. Sunayana to you, who's an expert in social art for behavior change at One Drop Foundation. Uh, she primarily works on developing social and behavior change strategies and interventions that involve contemporary, traditional, and digital artists and art forms. Um, she has worked with NGOs and community-based organizations in India. Uh, and in initiatives uh, related to water sanitation 
and hygiene, child care, gender justice, and human rights. So uh, with these uh, few words of introduction, I uh, welcome both Ms. Priya and Sunayana and uh, request you to share uh, your experiences and advice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Malini. And thank you to you and your team for inviting us to share our experience. Uh, good afternoon to uh, everyone, everyone who's joined here. Um, could I request uh, the team to please uh, share our slides? Thank you so much. So um, as Malini shared a lot of, um, a lot of what we are going to talk about uh, has been mentioned previously. Uh, we are going to try to build further on, um, on what has been shared. There, you will find many echoes in what the previous speakers have, uh, have presented in their respective presentations. Our focus is going to be uh, creativity and uh, power of art to change behaviors, and especially among uh, children. And we'd attempt to share some of our experiences. Um, so we go to the next slide, please. Uh, so this is the structure of the presentation. As I shared, we will talk about why art for bringing about behavior change uh, and what specifically is One Drop's approach. We'd like to focus on Indian art and uh, encourage the promotion of local arts and artists. Um, we'd share a little bit about our uh, social art for behavior change approach. Um, and we'll also uh, look at the practical steps in uh, execution of uh, social art for behavior change. And then we go into two examples, uh, two of our uh, projects, one from Rajasthan, the other from Guatemala. We'd like to share our field experience from there to give you uh, an idea of how, how we went about it and perhaps that will inspire you. Next, please. So to begin with, uh, what is art? This is a difficult question. It's very difficult to define. I understand, but, um, but it'll be great if, um, if you could think along with me what it means to you as an individual, what is art for you? Um, what is art for us as a community, as a group? Um, this is, um, I share with you a very basic uh, definition that I have thought of. Uh, you might not agree with it, but um, just very simply and perhaps simplistically, art is a piece of work which is a result of uh, the artist's creativity and imagination. So here you might uh, consider different forms of art, drama, poetry, graphic art. Uh, please feel free to add your thoughts in the chat box um, as I ask questions. If there's anything that occurs to you, it'll be great to hear from you what you think. So in this particular photograph, you see uh, Bajju Sham. He is a Gond artist. Um, and I just want to uh, share with you what uh, uh, Bajju uh, Sham thinks of art. Uh, Next, just click once. Could you just click on the, uh, yes, thank you. So according to Bajju Sham, uh, art is part of our lives. During weddings and gond festivals, we paint our walls and fl uh, floors red, brown, black, and yellow using earth. We tell stories through our paintings and all of them revolve around trees, birds, and animals that form our world when we lived in the forest. Next, I'd, I'd like to borrow from another artist that some of you might know, T.M. Krishna, who's a Carnatic singer. And he says, every art object is a reflection of what we are and who we can be. Art rides the past, present, and future. Art is our gift to ourselves, a mirror of the truth we know and the truth that cannot be imagined. And lastly, Satyajit Ray, I, all of you probably know of him. And he says specifically about cinema, cinema's characteristic forte is its ability to capture and communicate the intimacies of the human mind. So this in a way sums up what, what art is and how different artists have thought about it. Next, please. So what then is the power of art? What do you think is the power of art? Can you, um, I again urge you to think about it along with me. And if you'd like to share some of your thoughts in the chat box, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, so can you also think about the, the last film that you watched that made you cry for the main character, not for yourself, but you're crying for the main character that you're watching. How did it make you feel? 
Do you remember the last poem that you read when you were having a very bad day and suddenly you read the poem and it made you feel good and you were smiling? Perhaps there was a painting that you saw, um, a painting that made you think about something that you've never thought about before. So that is the power of art. The power of art is that it jolts you out of your mundane existence. It makes you reflect, feel, imagine. Art can move you emotionally in profound and countless ways. As I argue, no other force can. Again, I'd like to borrow uh, from a couple of people, a couple of experts, artists themselves. Uh, could you click again, please? So Katrina Gregos, she in her TED talk shared that the best art should ask you what to think, prompt you to ask questions and put you in doubt. Art testifies to the unique capacity of humans to project, to dream, to reflect on things, not only as they are, but as they could or should be. Next. So this is Oliver Eliasson. I'm probably not pronouncing this correct. He's a sculptor. And in the World Economic Forum uh, of 2016, this is what he shared about the responsibility of artists. He says, one of the major responsibility of artists is to help people not only get to know and understand something with their minds, but also to feel it emotionally and physically. By doing this, art can motivate people to turn thinking into doing. I repeat, uh, it motivates people to turn thinking into doing. And that is what we'd like to capture. Next. So as we all know, uh, while working on behavior change, we understand that merely having facts does not lead to change in behavior. How many of us know that we should exercise on a daily basis, but well, we don't. So what we need to do is go beyond knowledge to ensure change in behavior. We need to appeal to both the rational part of our mind and also the emotional part. And some of this has been reflected on in the previous presentations, especially Nish, uh, Nitish Ji. Um, yes, we need to provide information. That is absolutely right. But we need to motivate. And this Ragini Ji had mentioned in her uh, presentation. We need to motivate. And that is where art can step in. Art can appeal to our thinking side and art can appeal to our feeling side. Next, please. So at the One Drop Foundation, you will see that this is a repetition of the slide that Nitish Ji uh, shared. Uh, but just to, uh, to share with you that uh, at One Drop Foundation, we in fact use this uh, particular uh, process of uh, behavior change, uh, which we borrow from Francesca and De Clemente. Um, and we believe that, if you can just click again, we believe that art can support each of these steps. Uh, depending on where you find your priority group, in this case, it's children, where you can find where you find your priority group. So um, you can think about it. Um, are the children that you work with, which stage, stage are they in? Are they in the stage where they have not considered hand washing at all? So then they are in the pre-contemplation stage. Are they in the stage where they have started thinking about it? Then they are in the contemplation stage. Perhaps they're in the preparation stage where they have thought about it and now they want to prepare. They want to get to actually washing their hands. Um, that is the preparation stage. And then going on to the actual action of washing hands. And finally, it is a maintenance. That is the sustained behavior that Malini also spoke about. Sustained uh, behavior of hand washing. That is maintenance. And very often, and you, all of you, if you reflect on your own lives and perhaps at some point when you wanted to change your own behavior, you must have found that you slip up, you move to maintenance and then come down occasionally to, to contemplation, you're back to maybe preparation. So this happens with all of us. But importantly, activities that are based on art, these can be developed to support and intensify each and every step that we present here. Next. So based on um, what we usually uh, at one drop uh, rely on is the uh, IBM wash model, which has been developed by uh, Dribbledis and others. Now, we believe that to change behavior, uh, such as uh, hand washing with soap, it is imperative that we adopt a holistic approach where you take into account uh, the contextual factors, psychosocial factors and technological factors. And some of this has already been covered 
but this is just for us to share with you the model that we follow. Uh, we follow this framework, which is based on the socio-ecological model. And this helps us map all the factors that influence our behavior. And in this case, this is uh, hand washing. Now, a behavior is affected by the context. Now, the context could be the demography, the geography, uh, the density of population. And also, of course, psychosocial factors, which Ragini ji uh, elaborated beautifully in her presentation. So uh, it could be perceptions related to hand washing. It could be perceptions related to what do others think? What do others do? Um, or emotions that they feel. Uh, so these have to be borne in mind. And apart from that, of course, technology without uh, a tap with running water and availability of soap, it is next to impossible to wash hands. So technological factors we have to keep in mind. So all of these have to be put together when we think about influencing uh, any human behavior. And in this case, it is hand washing. Next, please. Uh, this is very quickly to share that we uh, at One Drop we have developed this uh, model for sustainability, which is called the ABC for sustainability model, where we look at access, behavior, and capital when we are working on um, working um, on a specific wash effort. Um, and here at the heart of it is the community that drives the the entire effort, and it builds uh, on the IBM Wash framework. Next, so. Um, as I was sharing previously, for us, our work literally at the heart of it is, um, a, is art and culture. And uh, this is because One Rock finds its roots in the Cirque du Soleil, which was founded by Guy Laliberté. And Guy reinvented the circus uh, to make it an art form that was a viable option for uh, all kinds of artists. So One Drop 2 uh, stays true to its uh, roots. Uh, and keeps art and artists at the heart of its work. So while we are working on behavior change uh, in any context, we immerse ourselves in the local cultural context and draw from the rich and varied art forms uh, prevalent in, in that area. So uh, this ensures community leadership, of course, but it also promotes art forms and it promotes the livelihoods of uh, local artists and artisans. Some of this was also mentioned by, uh, by Ravi Ji in his presentation. Um, so, so Nana and my colleague will now uh, build further on this uh, to share with you and give you a glimpse of how you can go about engaging artists and leveraging the power of uh, art in your specific uh, specific context. Thank you. Next slide, please. Thank you and uh, thanks Priya for sharing uh, what art is and why art can inspire us. So to continue understanding the power of art to change behaviors, we would like to share our SABC strategy with you, which uh, through which we try to inspire, activate and sustain behavior change. These stages are developed while keeping the behavior change model that Priya just shared in mind. Uh, so the inspire stage, as you can see, addresses pre-contemplation and contemplation. So basically, when we talk about the chintan and chintan, when uh, communities are thinking or not thinking that we have to change something, so when we talk about that stage, ki baat karte, we uh, often uh, opt for multidisciplinary shows, street plays with puppetry, dance and music to increase awareness around the importance of uh, practicing these healthy behaviors at the community level. Um, at the activate stage, um, we go a step further by designing activities with local artists to enable active participation of priority groups at the school or village level to address specific perceptions and barriers to behavior change. Uh, primarily looking at how the practice of a certain behavior can be made easier. So what step we can take from that desired behavior to one step to pass? What are the challenges or barriers that we can overcome? And again, to, to make it fun and to make it engaging is what the real challenge is, as our previous uh, speakers have also shared. 
Um, so here we also design activities for different segments of our priority groups as well as influencers and secondary groups. So it can also be that when we're working with children, we're working with both boys and girls and of course non-binary uh, uh, persons. So in that case, we need to uh, design our activities specifically for those groups because their routines can be different um, their context can be different and gender and social norms also affect them differently um, and finally we reach the sustained stage which is aimed at creating nudges and encouraging a sustained practice of these healthy behaviors through campaigns involving mascots murals stickers radio shows and films and we try to involve all stakeholders that can contribute towards sustaining the practice at the of these desired healthy behaviors in the sustained stage so if we um, move to the next slide uh, we've shared some of the examples of the kind of activities that you can follow in each of these steps and again we see uh, these interventions as a holistic approach so we won't just inspire people and leave them there we won't just go and do activate uh, activities and leave them there but it's a sustained kind of uh, process that we we would like to engage people with so here again you can see in um, the slide that there are priority groups and who our audience is for each of these uh, stages is also defined um, pretty clearly at the beginning of our work. Um, so to plan any of these um, SAVC interventions, social art for behavior change interventions, we must first unpack what social art is. So could we please move to the next slide? Right. Thank you. Uh, so social art is premised on building participation and action through art. It involves communities in the creation of art and behavior change both. Um, and this we can, um, when we try and understand participation also, often participation is limited to being audience or participating as audience, but actively, partici art actively participating in the entire process is what we try and achieve. Uh, and this is to ensure that the priority group members uh, remain at the center of our thought processes as well as our interventions. And to do this, we follow a very simple rule that any SAVC intervention must be with, by, and for the community members. So just like the preamble of our constitution, this is our preamble for social art for behavior change. Um, and how do we realize this? This is another uh, challenge that we must try and unpack because participation is easy to say, but very hard to achieve. And like, again, we've been discussing how to make um, our interventions more engaging, which actually enable agency in our community members and our priority groups. So if we could move to the next slide. Um, this is realized. So this participation is realized by ensuring uh, the participation of priority groups in the design and creation of the social art interventions and the performances and activities by making them as inclusive and interactive as possible and by engaging communities in the evaluation of the interventions before and after they're implemented as well. So they really feel like they're a part of the process and they must be. So um, just to think out loud, do you think any of these processes that I'm mentioning, um, whether it's the preamble or how to make, uh, how to design participatory interventions, do you think this is possible for any art form? And if that is, then basically any art form can be also turned into a social art form if we approach it differently. So just trying to unpack some of uh, these questions with you and try and understand what guides our understanding for truly participatory approach. Um, and by participatory approach, again, you'll see um, our focus is on uh, enabling agency to act for your own transformation, your own uh, change. So first and foremost, the interventions must be in the local language and in tune with the local culture and context that the communities live in. The intervention should also reflect challenges and social realities that do not allow community members to practice healthy behaviors, even while they're willing to do so. So we often hear uh, when we go into the field, many people say, hum sochte to hai, par 
हो नहीं पाता है या कर नहीं पाते हैं सो इमेजिन बींग स्टक इन अ प्लेस वेर यू हैव द नॉलेज यू वॉन्ट टू एक्ट ऑन दैट नॉलेज बट यू आर नॉट एबल टू इज इट बिकॉज यू आर नॉट बींग अलाउड टू एक्सेस Uh, water resources because of caste dynamics is it because you're a woman and uh, you have to think about your safety and sexual harassment when you step out to ensure that you have enough water in your house for your children to also be able to wash hands at five critical times so there are many aspects of social norms uh, that need to be addressed and this burden should not fall on the communities who are oppressed by these very norms so we must include all stakeholders when we're working on social norms which are often made invisible and maybe therefore social arts offer us a way to recognize and address them by having these conversations by bringing out these conversations expressing these uh, social norms and dynamics through art uh, similarly environmental contexts and their implications on the ability to practice a behavior must be recognized in our intervention so if you are even um, making a street play or a thematic show if we do not acknowledge the fact that say when we are working in bihar children are being encouraged to wash hands at five critical times but 3 to 4 months of their lives are affected by floods especially in north bihar so we must include that reality in our uh narratives so that they feel again like they are a part of it and that we've understood them uh before we're going ahead and suggesting any changes to them so having said that i think the other thing we need to do and how we try and enable agency and more engaging uh, conversations is by avoiding sending out repeated messages as they're often not responsive to the context in which people have to act uh trying to persuade people or telling them the benefits of a healthy behavior is not enough as it does not enable processes for people to act with agency we need to think along with them through dialogue and debate and focus on how practicing a healthy behavior can be made easier for them at each step get to the drivers and barriers of their lives we need to listen to them our interventions also need to create a sense of ownership of the change one can bring in their own life by designing activities that provide community members enough space to express themselves and find confidence in themselves and art again does this job beautifully because often we see that even in community meetings when we do have interactions it's usually four or five people who are more vocal who speak up but when we bring art into the picture everybody has uh, the tools and the uh, and the space to speak up and contribute to a collective understanding of um what their context is and what their challenges are so the activities and performances need to be interactive allow space for critical thinking and also asking questions which also make them feel motivated towards practicing healthy behaviors so now some of you must be wondering um how do we go about implementing our social art for behavior change approach can we please move to the next slide so here are the steps involved in creating any sabc intervention it is important that we premise our work on an accurate understanding of the existing scenario related to any health behavior uh, so we begin with formative research that builds on qualitative and quantitative analysis of the ecosystem of any healthy behavior along with gathering knowledge on the social and the cultural realities of our priority groups this also helps us stay away from assumptions which is very important when we're working with behavior change so along with the uh, the formative research as you can see the next steps we engage in social artist scouting which is a lot of fun because you really learn about the variety of art forms which often people term as dying art forms but it's all about recognizing them and keeping them alive um so we uh, engage in social artist scouting which is aimed primarily at mapping uh, local traditional folk art forms available in the region traditional painting folk music storytelling crafts and more and teachers and children here i'm sure would be very interested in exploring some of these ways as well to uh, engage with each other this process also uh, allows us to think about which art forms are most suitable for enabling participation and the messages that we are trying to convey so where 
is it that painting or a visual art form will be more effective where is it that street plays or storytelling would be more effective i think those are things that we can again discuss and collectively come to an understanding of so once we've selected uh, these local artists as well as social art partners who guide the artists and community members we enter the co-creation process which is like the heart of our sabc approach uh, where the content as well as the performances and activities are developed as well as which also means uh, developing interactive discussions games and quizzes quizzes which are then woven into these interventions uh, we conduct trainings now um, in these trainings what's important also is that the artists need to feel uh, the ownership of their art forms as well as the messages they are giving and often behavior change is something um, which has, I mean, a very similar term terminology that we use across countries and across states, but sometimes it's important for us to pause and find more locally suited words and terms um, for people to enjoy um, owning them as well as being able to talk about them. Um, here, the interactive sec uh, sections of our um, of our interventions again as mentioned can be debates can be games and quizzes and these happen at different points of our performances and activities so it can happen before a, a activity it can happen during a street play like forum theater for example or at the end of the performances where we again try and reinforce the messages and leave some nudges in the community um, after which we conduct some trainings with our field facilitators to ensure that activities are implemented in the spirit of the SABC approach and monitoring and evaluation can also be done through documentation and participatory methods. And finally, the performances and activities are piloted and feedback is taken from the priority groups to fine tune these messages and ensure the language is accessible while communicating information about perceptions and enabling agency delicately. Um, so now we would like to share some examples of the SABC approach. Could we please move to the next slide? Thank you. So the first one is from Rajasthan, where we worked with primary school children on washing hands with soap, especially after defecation and before eating. A thematic show was developed by our social art partner Vilas Janbe with folk artist Nanlalji and his group. The thematic show included demonstrations of hand washing with soap as well as interactive elements that enable children to participate in the performance, as you can see from the photographs. Um, during COVID, and this is again especially for Rajasthan, during COVID as well, um, we tried to ensure that our, particip our participatory approach is not compromised because of uh, working remotely or not being able to reach the community members that easily. So we leveraged uh, digital tools to invite children to create and record slogans in their own dialects, which were then included in public awareness campaigns, which went from village to village on these loudspeakers and children gathered all around because they were so excited and they also re repeated many of these slogans. So these were little um, give like, something that they gave to the campaign and it went back to them also. So this kind of exchange was really interesting. And of course, uh, talking about digital tools, we're also working on a game app, which uh, on hand washing with soap and many other healthy behaviors, which again, uh, interacts with children as well as uh, community members of all ages um, to be able to talk about uh, these important behaviors in the context of COVID-19. Um, However, we need to realize that digital tools are not the only way to work in the community and we must have direct interpersonal communication, especially when we're working on behavior change. Um, so the next, ex uh, before we move to the next example, um, this little slogan that I was just talking about, there's a little uh, audio clip, if uh, you could just play this for everybody. We couldn't hear it. I hope some of you could hear it. Um, but again, it was. Oh, no, we, uh, could it be played again, please? It, uh, I don't think it's audible. Yeah. 
Right. So that was in the Garasya dialect of uh, South Rajasthan. And the children are saying, stay informed and stay healthy, stay aware and stay healthy. So then can I request you to wrap up now? Yes, um, I'm going to go to my last slide. Uh, so the next slide, please. Thank you. The next example is from Guatemala. Mural Azos was a result of a creative process within the SABC framework in Quiche in Guatemala that focused on wash related healthy behaviors among children. Uh, the process engaged children in painting and drawing with the imagination of their community and how they can stay healthy. These drawings were then used as a basis to develop mural designs based on mosaic art by the Armadillo Art Group. The children then brought these designs and murals alive on the walls of their schools to create a sense of being agents of their own transformation. And the murals were then finally inaugurated. So it's not just about, like I said, it's not just about one activity or creating something and then leaving it there, but trying to generate a discussion around it. So um, even somebody earlier had mentioned about wall paintings and I mean, how can we add more meaning? How can we make them more participatory? So these murals then were inaugurated finally by organizing a procession that was led by children with a huge puppet of a serpent, Kumats, that exists in the local folklore along with a lot of indigenous music played by local artists as well as the participating community members and children. All the stakeholders were also invited to participate in this celebration as well as engage in a collective reflection on the healthy behaviors of their and their importance as well. So if I could just request you to go to the next slide and we'll share a small clip of this uh, final stage of the inauguration of the mural as well as the serpent Kumats. Thank you. Uh, we could pause it there. Could you please uh, pause? I think my team members liked it very much. They want to watch again. <laughs> Yes, we'll share some uh, uh, links to our work as well. Or jate jate ek bar aap sabko bahut bahut shukriya ada karna chahte hain ki aapne hamare baare mein socha ki aap community ko, yani ki hamare samuday ko apne kam ke beech mein rakhenge, jo hamare bache hain, unko kam ke ekdam aadhar pe banate hue, unke saath kam karte hue. Ham jaise kalakaron ko bhi aap nahi bhulenge, kyunki kalakar aur kala दोनों आपका साथ देने के लिए तैयार है हमारी एक ताकत है जिसका हम आशा करते हैं आप सब आ, मिलकर आ, इस्तेमाल करेंगे और हमें भी इस काम करने में आप सबके साथ बहुत मजा आएगा तो थैंक यू और फिर मिलेंगे बाय बाय थैंक यू थैंक यू सिनेना फॉर क्लोजिंग द सेशन ऑन सच अ हाई एंड पॉजिटिव नोट वेयर ऑल ऑफ अस आर लीविंग विद अ स्माइल ऑन आवर फेस एंड सॉरी फॉर pronouncing your name incorrectly after seeing the spelling i thought it has to be pronounced in a very exotic manner and not in indian sanana <laughs> so sorry about that uh, so thank you very much and thank you priya for responding to the questions in the chat box i'm now going to ask all the panelists to please respond or share any thoughts they may have as part of the closing uh, remarks i'll start with mr nishit because he had asked if he could just speak for a while and then it's it's an open forum for anyone who would like to share something thank you dr malini i just wanted to say in the context of uh, what one drop had shown 
that uh, you know we, during our research with school students uh, on our adult uh, adolescent mental health program we found that in most classrooms bulk of the classrooms a very large number of students performed below average levels uh, routinely whether it was class tells or school school so i mean uh, one would think that education would lift the vast number but in every classroom there would be 10 or 15% which would be at the top and a, a small percentage in the middle but a very large number at the bottom and then we started researching this a little bit more and we found out that research has been done in germany uk us and all that to figure out which part of your brain has been wired as you know the left brain controls the logic and reasoning aspects of your life and the right brain the creative and artistic co co components of your life and in germany 25% of the population is right brain wired in 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 us it's 22% of the population so we were doing our own kind of empirical research because that kind of research is a very big one in india and our estimate is that roughly 35% of school classrooms are right brain wired so therefore using modeling or using art forms is actually an extremely uh, good method to uh, to Im uh, to imbue learning in them i mean in fact we found that uh, schools in uk which use uh, music along with math tables work better so in fact in our adult uh, adolescent mental health program we used we created a, <clears throat> a, a a game the hopscotch game on uh, mental health parameters we created printed on a on a pvc thing and we used that to explain concepts it works very well so i mean i i entirely agree that creative and art forms uh, tend to uh, hasten learning thank you so much thank you thank you so much uh, so uh, belinda ragni any thoughts closing comments from your side and uh... malini i just want to thank everybody and the closing thought that i want to leave you with is that as communicators and especially where it comes to a school based program we are so hell bent on making people listen to what we want to tell them that we actually forget that people have agency people have their own mind people are the experts on their own life and this applies equally to children until we put our audience at the heart of the communication until we think about them in a very immersive way what has come out from each and every presentation you know whether we talked about it in terms of research people have to decide to change their behavior themselves what of what you offer them as a communicator applies to them what is practical what appeals what makes sense it's a big paradigm shift this is not about telling somebody what to do this is about persuasion this is about engagement this is about emotion and please if you if we begin at the end of this webinar to think about communication in these terms we will definitely be effective thank you <clears throat> thank you ragni so well said milinda any thoughts from your side yeah again i just want to echo the fantastic uh presentations informative i've been in this sector for many years and i learned a lot today you can always learn something so this is one thing but again echoing the last uh speaker's comment that it is a collective effort it's a collective effort of science of art of all of us coming together to create agency and i think agency means giving everybody a space and a voice and i think sometimes we go too much on one side or too much on the other side it's for everybody because change uh, change is is for all of us to do and change comes uh, when we inspire ourselves and we also through that process inspire others so again thank you i'm inspired i'm inspired for art i'm inspired for more to learn more and i hope also others will join the walk wins network and and continue this journey together so keep healthy keep safe and thank you very much asma thank you thank you so much uh, all the panelists and all the members here as well as on youtube uh, ragnis vanlata said thank you for the response uh, and uh, i just like to conclude by saying that it's been a fabulous learning uh, session today and uh, uh, i think this is the beginning of the journey because uh, behavior change is not easy to understand so even though we listen and appreciate 
uh, and we go back with a lot of uh, food for thought. Uh, when it comes down to implementation, we keep getting stuck. So it's important that uh, we as a collective, as WASH network members, take this forward uh, and see how we can develop a simple, uh, perhaps a training program uh, on a train to trainers uh, uh, model so that uh, many uh, states uh, would uh, benefit from this program and we help them in setting up the unit uh, on behavior change in every state to support schools. So uh, on that note, I request partnership from all the um, uh, panelists here and uh, wish everybody uh, who's uh, joined us today. I should have started this uh, on this note, but uh, wish you all a very happy new year. Stay safe. Uh, and we look forward to catching up with all of you uh, very shortly. Thank you. Katyani, we can uh, close the...